Hello and welcome back to Penn State League. Today, our coverage of CLOL with Penn State Division I taking on New York University. Uh, we're already in draft, so I'm, I'm going to immediately switch us over to that. Both these teams looking to start off their, or really just continue on with their spring run at Collegiate League of Legends. As pretty standard bands coming through thus far in the draft. Pantheon, Olaf, Rumble all hitting the bench. Yeah, could look for it. Uh, the Rumble Band, of course, the one odd one out going towards the mid laner for Penn State in Vale. Uh, yep, very comfortable on the champion, despite maybe not having the best build path to start. And Evelyn Band, which I believe is targeted onto Doubt. Yep, and looking at the Jin lock-in here for Penn State. Pretty standard for the AD carry so far. If you have blue side, it's pretty much always going to be Kaisa. Has proven, especially in the highest levels of play, to be the strongest AD carry currently in the meta. Uh, very good at early laning. Scales really well. Jin debatably has better scaling in the later portions of the game, but Kaisa not going to be feeling too bad in that matchup specifically, um, especially with... Um, Gale Force, Kraken Star, whatever you want to go. And Lilia, another uh, pretty staple jungle pick coming up here for the current meta of League of Legends. That's going to be piloted by Deja Vu, who is now... I'm not even going to try to pronounce that backwards, so you guys have fun with that one. Yep, and I'm a s Yeah, and Galio lock in meaning although it could be flexible, technically speaking. More than likely going on to David in the bot lane with the Kai'Sa. Um, bit surprising to see a blinded Galio generally a lot weaker, I think, of a bot lane presence than what we saw in maybe Season 9 where you had the Flash Taunt still available and all these other tools that you can work with with Galio. But a bit interesting. You could have maybe looked for something a little bit aggressive. Nautilus, of course, still available. Not necessarily one of the staple picks currently in the meta, but very, very strong. Yep, and really like the Karthus ban from Penn State here. Assuming that is going to be Galio support, one thing you would really like to look at if your NYU is trying to get that AP jungler and then have an AD topside, where you can really get a lot of value out of Karthus, out of the Requiem. And another great pickup from PSU here, if they lock it in, Nautilus can be much stronger laning uh, with the Galio there, has a lot of pick potential, and also if for some reason the Galio is a flex pick, uh, takes that option away from Kaisa, but 
Still very strong. Very good solid engage. And NYU picking up that AP jungler. They're going to go with the Echo, not something we've seen too much of in Season uh, 11 so far. And then Fiora for Ice Flower in the top lane, so going to go with the carry split push option, which I think is a little bit off flavor for the rest of what Penn State has put together here and what is a very strong core team fighting comp. So the Fiora a little bit out of place, but... Definitely not going to be feeling too terrible when placed against the Orn opposite side. Yep, and I think both these teams, I think, have a... L we see this occasionally in the collegiate leagues, especially, and especially once we get down to, like, the intramural and amateur leagues, is a lot of very um, interesting draft ideas, something that we don't normally see much. I think the Galio support lock and especially for NYU, though it can be a very strong presence, what we normally see when we see the Galio end up getting flexed to the support rule is when you have a lot of very consistent, very good dive. Um, sorry, getting message about we can't hear. Cocaster, I'll fix that here in a minute. But back to the point I was making was Galio, generally speaking. Uh, we see it with Dive. It's very interesting. That I think NYU ends up banning the Camille in against Penn State. You could do as a takeaway pick. Ice Flower does play the pick and then maybe ban something that's not Seraphine to um, continue to be able to just pressure topside, and then you have that Galio Camille combo that everyone loves with the Hextech Ultimatum, and then the Hero's Entrance to really just kind of step it up. Um, stream, if you can't hear any audio at all right now in terms of music or something, just let me know because that might be the problem with Soccer Wars. All right, we're just getting this glitch again. This happens from time to time. You turn in, tune in the stream again and see if it's working now, maybe. There's a two-minute delay. There's a two-minute delay, so we'll see. Uh, this happens from time to time. I'm not really sure why. Something with OBS. I just keep having to add another desktop source for some reason, so we'll see. It's really cool. Anyway, though... Back to the draft for the moment. If uh, Soccer Wars is still unable to be heard, just let me know, I guess. Um, But anyway, Penn State putting together a fairly solid team fighting copy of the set in the mid lane, which is going to be perfectly fine into the Talon. Lots of trading potential there with the Haymaker. Uh, Lilia really liking that they have the as the only AP source of damage, going to be very, feeling very good in fights in terms of being able to actually effectively dish out uh, whatever she wants to really do, whether it's the Eep Watch Out, the Ultimate, all these different combinations that Lily can do. Going to be wanting to do that. And actually, besides maybe Echo and Talon, has a fairly good teamfight stance. One thing we see a lot of trouble with Lilia is she requires to have you to have like a certain level of spacing in teamfights. Or she just doesn't do damage. <laughs> or either A, doesn't do damage, or just explodes. So you do have that issue, which can arise. And I'm going to continue to debug audio here for just a second. So show you guys the rune page.
Yep, and Pensei going for the invade. They find out what he has to flash away. Barely survives as well as burning the one pot. Yep, Pensate also going to be able to get the red buff off this one, so completely 100% successful invade from Penn State. Little transition gank here, mid lane by Deja Vu. He's gonna path up toward topside, possibly go, probably go for his Raptors, then red buff, and that'll be the completion of the five camp. Yep, makes it very difficult for Talon to actually get any meaningful damage down. Ice Flower possibly in trouble here. Does manage to parry the Brill proc, so will not go down immediately. Trying to get maybe a bit too heavily into Orn. Oh, he's looking for it. F has to flash the dodge. Drop some healing off of the Brittle proc. Will find it. First blood over to Selenik. And that is not super good for Penn State. Orn going to be very happy scaling up in this lane now. Going to be able to get that early Bramble Vest by. And Fiora not going to be feeling the best for quite a while yet. Oh, and play bot side as well. Hook lands. And that is Panhandler picking up one more kill. Great hook by Need to Get Better. Grabbing that one nice and easy. Oh, and gank mid lane here, possibly. Veil grabs the E onto Talon, finds part of a Haymaker, but Talon, of course, could be very easy just to parkour away. Flash forward from Deja Vu, very uh, optimistic as Ice Flower now is going to come back down. Low key parkour, it's a flash, great flash hook from Need to Get Better. And they grab the kill, but quite a bit expended in the process. Three flashes off of Penn State for the one kill onto Talon. Yep. Oh, now Panhandler in some trouble. Has to flash away from the Ignite on Dawid. Absolutely. Oh, Selenik in some trouble. I almost got the counter. Ice Flower barely able to come out with the kill. The Brittle Proc almost able to grab that one for him. Tried to flash for the kill, but ends up going down. Good, uh... Yep. 
Yep. And so far, early game going very well from Penn State. They're going to lose the Dragon here as Jungler shows topside, but for the most part, looking pretty solid in this early portion of the game. 1,000 gold lead. Vale is going to spot out that they're taking the Dragon, but again, there's not much he can do at this button juncture on it. They are going to go for the collapse of Panhandler, looking for it. Hook lands onto Deweed, but it's a flash forward from the Galio. Panhandler goes down. Extra Matic grabbing that kill. Yeah, need to get better. Already roaming mid lane again, looking for Talon. And he's got an emote and then get immediately hooked under. So, going to take a little bit of damage here for his troubles. But, Nautilus, you know. And top lane, once again, Ice Flower just going to be pushing up on the Orn. Is level 6, so Selenic could look for something if he wants to. If, uh... He thinks the Penn State top laner gets a little bit too aggressive on the Fiora. Could always try to go for something with the ultimate. Not saying that's the best thing ever you can do there, but is an option. As Fiora not taking six. Yeah, Selenix possibly looking for something here. His Penn State. Yep, Deja Vu has the ultimate, so the Dragon's going to go down. Ice Flower still has all the vitals up. Orn finally popping the Ornhorn, but it's a little bit too late. Deja Vu, the beneficiary of the kill, and another good gank by the Penn State jungler to keep kind of just accelerating this gold lead. This is Penn State playing with a lot of tempo here in the early game. They pretty much have control of the entire game pace thus far. The only thing that really has happened is NYU going for that cross-map trade with the Dragon play. Lots of pings mid lane here by NYU, but they are spotted out. Need to get better also with the parallel roam up with the bot lane. Very good right now, indeed. Turpicon, of course, getting that change with the Ability Haste now on it instead of the Tenacity, so much better for those tankier members. Uh, especially stuff like the Cho'Gath that we see it on quite consistently, where it can be very, very uh, obnoxious. Yep, and by the way, just stream, just tell me when you can actually hear sound. It's still uh, still trying to figure out how to fix this, so just let me know when you can hear literally anything but me.
<laughs> yeah, pretty obvious. Penn State, though, going to be grouping up for the second Drake. They have the map control to do it. They bring their bot lane up. Yep, and they're going to go for it anyway, though. On the dragon goes Dao. They're looking to burn this down pretty quick with the weed. Yeah, they probably just get it here. Penn State forcing, is forced to respond to the Herald play mid. And that's going to allow NYU to continue to strack, stack some dragons. Selling it, going for a trade in the top lane against Ice Flower. And now bot lane, there's another fight. Hook goes into Dao. Still has the ultimate available to try to get away here. As Pan is having to flash away, but he's caught on the other side. The assassin is able to grab him, and now... Deja Vu looking for the re-engage on to Doubt. Has the ultimate, pops it as Deweed misses Deja Vu able to flash away. But Doubt to follow with the E. And now NYU grabs two for zero off the back of the dragon to even out the gold. Yep, and Selenik possibly going down here. Yep, solo kill in the top lane for Ice Flower as bot lane. Just going to look for a one for one here. No, the root from Panhandle are able to find it. Forces the flash, but the shield is able to take it. Now Panhandle looking for it. Reengage with the hook, and now extra Matic getting a little bit too greedy. Finds a one trade back kill, but is picked up in the end by Panhandler. And Penn State going to claim another advantage in this. What is that going to be a very scrappy game here now that some of these dragons coming down? To get the move speed after and you get the big burst to damage if you hit someone. So, gonna be interesting to see how the actual build goes. Okay, so you can hear him now? That's awesome. Let's go. Uh, outstanding. I have no idea what I changed that worked because I've been just flipping around stuff off repeat, but I'm glad it's working now. Uh, oh, Vale might be in a little bit of trouble. How is the chem tank though? So is pretty healthy. Yep, grand challenge to come out again in the top lane. Selenik able to dash away, though, with the Ornhorn is now. Deja Vu looking for it as well in the bot lane play going down. David looking for Panhandler, but isn't able to find the taunt. Only on to need to get better. An extra Matic able to grab that kill as Echo comes through. Meanwhile, topside Vale grabbing himself a kill on low-key parkour. Three people in New York in the bot side, so Penn State's like, okay, we'll send three people top side. And uh, luckily, there happens to be an objective up top lane right now, which is the second Herald of the game. So, that'll be very useful to pick up, especially with very important Dragon coming up after this as well. And Jin is playing very fast and loose here. Panhandler gonna be going very low. 
Dallas out looking for the kill. It's extra to be able to find that enough damage to grab it. So it's another two off the dive in bot side, but Pepe looks to counter bail on a down. Ice Flower able to find it with TP play and Exomatic. Trying to kite out the Fjord, but that's just a little bit too hard of a task. Good parry for the Ord engage, and now Dewey's in some trouble. Just has a little bit healthy. Triple kill for the Fjord. Ice Flower looking for the quadra on his cell. Next, one more thing we'll get it. No, not given over Veil. And that's basically just confirmation that Penn State will get this upcoming dragon. And when we see the sleep, no down, just gonna jump away. Okay. So yeah. And in the midst of all that, New York did get the first turret, which was the bot lane one, after the orange teleported back in. So that was. Oh, I thought we gonna be dueling. Has. Nothing else so far. Talent is gonna be doing business. Loki Parker, Loki Parker, Loki Parker, Loki Parker, Loki Parker, Able to heal away. Panhandle with a Gale Force gonna claim the kill instead. And a little bit too aggressive. Death. Loki Parker just not able to find that kill on Ifa. Really wanted that shutdown. And now we're just sort of seeing this, uh. This is where this Fiora having, uh, five kills under her belt is gonna. It, oh, it only goes downhill from here as a tank player if you're against it. Yeah, now need to get better. Might be caught out here. So we look at the engage, but his stage off is here first. The as the ultimate, they're gonna burn two on the Galio. Now extra Maddox. Trying to get in as well. Panhandler looking for the kill. That rocket. That rocket almost saved him there. But really, uh, the queen of DOTs in this game. Ice Flower just poking. Having poking fun the with the Orn. He Playing can't really do food. much here. Playing with your food if you're so inclined, but... Yeah. As the Herald play is definitely gonna make this gold lead for Penn State. I have to spin in the game, or not. As that oh, Echo Q. Orn, Orn. They are gonna summon the Orn, Orn looking for the Regan. Literally Park Orn looking for something, but it's only Bale in the front. The camera's on the tank. Is now it needs to get better. In the mix, stunned up the killer instinct able to grab extra Matic to kill. Another one on Titan. Hey, you, you take those if you're getting this pretty far behind. Okay. Cost the Orn ultimate, sure, but you still yeah, have pretty big pressure and you can get that turret in return. So, good play, honestly. Bringing the Orn down, that turret, top lane turret was gonna die anyway. You might as well try to get something. And, uh,. Killing the support is a kill nonetheless. Now, now the map opens up ever so slightly with both of the mid lane tier 1's going down. Very, very important. As Kai'Sa actually hit two items faster than the Jin. Does have Collector, which means Q upgrade is acquired. And we're gonna be waiting to see if she can get her E upgrade anytime soon. And we're sort of slowing down now. There's no real objectives to fight over. Baron's gonna be up in about 20 seconds. But I don't really think any of these teams want to really commit to a on on spawn Baron. Doesn't really offer them much at all. If they get caught out there and lose, either of the teams just get snowballed off of, and next dragon's gonna be up in a minute 30. Yep, that's pretty much what we're gonna be looking at here as the next big fight. Penn State feeling pretty good so far around a 3k gold lead. Ice Flower, of course, beyond massive now on Fjord. Two items fully completed. Not Bale the gold feeling very good as well. And, and Deja Vu, nothing to stop at as well. Panhandler slowly being scaled up here. Yeah. Still is behind uh, her counterpart on the Kaisa. By Everyone, everyone's got gold. You're looking now. To still to try to get that collector in here. Yeah, everyone's got mythics now, so it's gonna be very good. Zanya is coming in for deja vu. I think that's very, very smart because that's the only source of AP damage. If you die, you're stuck 
with someone like the Jin and the Set trying to bust down some tanks, which they can be good at once they get a bit later into the game, but Fiora most of the time is going to be off in the side lane, so she's not going to be really team fighting. And both teams setting up for this upcoming ocean play. Yep, about 40 about. seconds left. Pense currently with pretty much no bitch control. NYU doing a great job of getting all these control wards in the pit, but they're going to look for Ice Flower and so far. Has to pop the grand challenge and flash away from low-key parkour. Is out, still need to follow. Flash is forward, trying to fight it, but now the healing is there for Fior. Has to pop the ultra grab Core As Data the flash forward only finds one onto the Talon, and now grabs the grand enter. So these are major ults being burned, and now the curtain tall as well, but it's under nobody. Being engaged by Pente, misses by Needy and Meta now, just going on to the orb and trying to do so much damage. Nautilus almost taking out immediately, Veiled into the back line, looking for the Haymaker, can't find it. Ice Clara doing the fray. The back line telling it getting caught as well. What? The buzzer being pressed, but finally he goes down in a great three day face the Gore Drinker to boot. Head State gonna clean house. All five for the Drake and Baron. And it's the team fight that blows this game wide open from a 3k to a 5k gold lead. It looks a bit nasty with how many ultimates were popped early on, I but hey, no it gets it done. Happened. I have no idea what was happening there. You have fights on every end of River, Brass, Stone, Stain, Pop. It was looking, I think, pretty fine for New York at the start there with the orange sort of body blocking down that river as four people from them wail onto Ice Flower. But the re-engage happens from Vale. I think it's a great that E and then everyone just sort of dies. New York in this in this giant cluster where the AoE damage from Fiora with Ravenous Hydra and Gore Drinker is sort of insane. And Talon and Galio are going hunting. Yeah, they're fighting Ice Flower, the teleport coming in from try to counter, but it's Ecomatic already in there. The healing from Fiora buys a lot of time, but it's not enough to save it. Dude. And the lead looking for the engage on the Veil, but he ults away on to Selenix. Veil trying to get out, but he just can't get to the CC. Finds a victory, a three man sleep out of Deja Vu. Eve not gonna do too much, but the double kill for the Lily, and nonetheless, the lead now to go as well. Triple kill for the Penn State jungler. And it was New York to find um, the pick, but Penn State actually moving incredibly quickly to counter there. Only yeah. end up losing one pair, and they're gonna push the bot lane here too. Thank you, Baron and Power Recall. Yeah, there's... <laughs> and Veil teleport, that, that helped too, but on the bright side, that was a 700 gold shutdown that went right into your Kaisa's pocket, so not the worst thing that could have happened, unfortunately, literally everybody from Penn State showed up, and there's a wave there, so now they can push that under, get that tier 2, probably not the tier 3, and... Yep, Selenic leaves the re-engage, has called the fourth gun, can't handle it, able to gale force away and root the galley with the engage. Quite stifled here from NYU as Lily Parkour just gonna continue to look for this Penn State 80 carry, it would seem. Hopping over some walls, yeah. ends up getting tagged by That Lily AE is really oppressive with its uh, big slow. I wanna look. I saw that Deja Vu did match E second, so that makes it a 45% slow if it lands, and when you're this pretty set on the Lua, you can just throw them out whenever, and it basically shuts down this sort of run-at-you engage that a Talon and an Echo would really want. Yeah, I mean, we haven't really talked about builds too much yet, to be honest. I, I will, it's I will all been that. basically the, uh, volume, standard. The uh, volume thing was a little bit more of my concern for fear portion of this game. It's but, pretty uh, standard build. Rockets on support. Yeah, yeah. Gordon and Night Talon, though. This is not Lethality Talon. This is not one-shot Talon, necessarily. I think it's a bit better. Night Harvester it's definitely, better, it's definitely better at uh, his term position in the game. Seeing at 1 and 5, you're not really going to be looking to do too much one-shotting at that scoreline. And they're gonna pensive to look at this, need to get better, going under on a Loki Park 4, but doubt there as well to do it. You got two tags for Lilia, but no ult to pop. You gotta to wait die. for the orange horn if you wanna try to do something. Yeah. And yeah. much, much better call for Pensate, I think, here, just changing down with the Baron. They're not gonna go for the aggressive fight. Yeah. They're gonna use their Baron minions effectively, they're gonna get the tier 2 top lane. 
I go for a reset wanted... here. And this should be because they probably last reset before Dragon. They might be able to get one yeah. more off, but I wouldn't suspect it. So, now, a little something... bit interesting that only two of them recalled. I'd like to see Lilia, Fiora, and Nala get back on the map quickly here as well. That way they don't come in too staggered for the Dragon Vision, but we shall see what Lilia the should is. buy a Sorcery Potion here. She's got 500 gold. You can't really buy much out. Nautilus also lacking control ward, so not super happy with what Pente is doing with Bax. I think they could have synced that up a lot better. And yeah. Be able to get off and be able to get a much more effective control. The Bax Fiora is still in base. Has DP, so not too big of a deal, but Nautilus doesn't have the control wards. He probably should set, did break control wards back down, so that okay. ends up going well. Um, instead, we have a... I think it was a null magic per mat Yeah, it was null magic. Deja vu. Not really I, I definitely would have preferred sorcery elixir because if you win the fight here, you could just like run it down one of your lanes because you've got all of your minions pushed up. And the first Baron is very good. At yeah, magic. now Doubt might be getting caught out. Oh. Handler is way too much damage. And, fast. and yeah, Echo is gone. Great. Uh, Talos trying to get out on the back line here, gets ulted oh, no. by Bale, but oh, Panhandler is still exposed and away. Shut down, going on to beat it. I thought oh, just, okay. you know, killing the enemy ADC I guess. in the base like Fiora's do is... I guess. Last one here for the fight. Grab the Haymaker in the base, Deja Vu goes unstoppable. I, I guess Fiora was just, you know, 1v2ing under the enemy base. Sure. I say doesn't even need the Ocean Dragon here <laughs> to really push this game over. They might just look... I don't think they can look for the end, but they're definitely going to grab the mid lane inhibitor. I leave the inhib, and then they can reset and take the dragon. And then, by that time, Baron would spawn. Yep. So. so the one, two, three, they might just look to go straight for dragon and then reset for Baron. Yeah, that uh, does give reset. Does give NYC a little bit of a window to try to get back out on the map and get to Baron as quickly as possible. But it looks like they're instead going to look to contest the dragon. So. Now, what happened there was that Echo gets caught out. Unfortunately... His ult didn't bring him over the wall, it just brought him right back Sensei, and then he also feels the flash. And then Talon sees the opportunity to try to kill the Jin. does actually kill Jin off. But then Galio ults to try to save Talon, and that leaves uh, Kaisa and Orn versus this extremely, extremely fed Fiora. And uh, those odds don't look good for Kaisa and Orn. And it just sort of left Ice Flower to just be like, yeah, I'm literally in your base, killing you all. No big deal. Yep. Now the reset will be coming in. Shuttle Crab will be spawning very soon, so we'll grab that and then probably just grab Baron and then run it down one of the side lanes and then finish off this game. Yep, Pesce in a very good position here, commanding gold lead around 9,000. Uh, you can really just tell, and, and why, uh... You not can't really, not really do they much. don't really have much. Solo laners aren't really in there. I mean Orn just got his Forge Fire Cape. So that upgrade he, he hasn't started upgrading. Normally when you're at this part of a gold lead against Orn, you see the board maybe 16, 17 levels in, you have some one item to kinda like reduce yeah. the effect of the gold lead that the enemy has in this game is just Best thing you can do here is like hope for an Echo Hail Mary steal, but you can't really do that because you're in two zone. Yeah, so they're gonna just go for the pick here instead. Selenik is gone. Talon is looking around the backside, but an extra He's already kill. down. Ice Flower. Good. Pump it out. Panhead with a double kill. Aww. Weed. No, also That's falling. Probably good. And now, yeah, now they just end mid lane. Echo they're just Talon. gonna run it down mid. Echo and Talon were looking for the flank the whole time, but Pet State pushed way too hard. Yeah, I was gonna say your best hope there was. As Echo say, guys, don't do anything. I'll try to Hail Mary steal it. Flower won't be doing her turn, still tanking, has there, so it's a good sign as Panhandle able to go on a killing stream with the that's curtain cool. call, and that's going to be curtains for game one. Let's take a kick down the six of turn, just the client still has this issue with the freeze. Amazing. That did the replay. But... Trust us, I'm pretty sure the game ended from this point. You'll, you'll just have to take our word for it there. Yep, Penn State going to take game one against NYU. Yeah, it did have a lot of back and forth going on there, I will say, which I was a big fan of. But unfortunately, some wild, wild fights around Dragon Area just sort of ballooned and already slowly bleeding out gold lead for Penn State to just explode. And uh, yeah, it just sort of happened like that. 
they all went deathless that game. Very like taken. There was, there was really no way other than Kaisa. Not like there was Kaisa much was to the only person that. who could kill Set. Kaisa was legitimately the only person who could kill Set that entire game. Yeah, so props to Vale. Just sort of neutralizing the Talon, because Talon couldn't really do much of anything that game with a set mid lane. So, yeah. Yep. Game one. I wouldn't say cleanly. Cleanly would be a little bit exaggerated, but Penn State showing up in the early game, able to grab some early leads despite being down in Dragons. Plays the map better. You end up getting a quadra kill on a counter dive with Fiora, and that after that, the game just kind of spirals yeah. out of control in your favor. So, more or less... Good game played by Penn State. NYU definitely not out of the running yet. I think some draft adaptations are certainly in order. The talent not really, I think, what the team was looking for I think in the mid lane. Talent there is something like you pick to hopefully like throw off a draft, but I don't think it's necessarily something you'd want to pick, you know, first rotation when you don't know what the enemy mid laner could be. Because then you see that Penn State could just pick something like a set and then as Talon, you're just like, oh, well, I guess I can't do anything now, huh? So it's probably something you can save for, like, second round if they lock in something like the squishy mage that Talon can definitely abuse a bit better. Gal I don't like Galio, like, when it's confirmed to be support before you go through, like, second yeah. phase. Especially if you have the, the deadly, like, if you're banning Camille and picking Galio, I think there's a problem just inherently with your draft. Yeah, that's also true. Like, that's just not, like, Galio is a very good champion right now. You have the semi-global, you have that. I I think that's also due to the fact that. That's just. It's then New York was on away. blue side. Because if, if you leave Camille open, like, you can first pick it, sure, but then that clues Penn State in that you're probably going Galio, Camille, and they can just take it, and Bale can play a mean Galio, and it offers that flex potential. So it's definitely yeah, yeah, like you said, you either, if you're banning the Camille, you really probably shouldn't be committing to the Galio in first round of draft, I'll say. I'm fine with it as like something you pick up in like second phase where you can be like, yeah, we can take Galio here and be fine, but I don't like it first round, especially when you already have your mid laner locked in it. A lot of the power of Galio comes in draft, where if he ends up being an unfavorable match at mid, you put him support and vice versa. Yep. I have to see, I'm assuming that we might be seeing a switch of sides here for game two, just based on having that maybe counter pick availability for the mid lane if you're still yeah. looking to go for something a bit crazier like the Assassins, but course gonna be turning over yeah. that blue side first pick to Penn State possibly allowing them to grab one of their more priority champions. But and we're gonna see that in game two and for now we're just gonna take a little break till we get lobby created. We'll see you guys here in a few.
Alright, welcome back for game two of Penn State Division One and New York University. Game one going over to Penn State in what was a very chaotic early game turning into a stomp of a late game. Chaotic understatement, I'll, I'd say. Yeah, very, very chaotic. Uh, interestingly enough, not a change of sides for this one, NYU electing to stay on the blue side. So, what that means is, I hope we see adaptations and changes in the draft. Because we we can talk on and on about how well or bad the champions were played, but it's very difficult to play champions well if you draft them into the wrong situation. And I feel like that's a bit of what New York University did there. Because we, har we harped on Galio not being flexed. And... Galio's not flexed. You have this talent in the mid lane, which is a very yeah, we, early pick. We harped on that a lot. So what I want to see is a bit more focus, I'd say, on sort of like just staying staying cool with, with champion picks. A lot of them were standard as for what meta goes, for what we've been seeing in these pro, pro regions, all, all four of the major ones, really. But it's sort of like the weird priority and not really understanding where some of these picks are actually picked during higher level drafts and when it's appropriate to flex things around and when it's not. So I'm hoping to see some adaptations of that end from NYU. Yep. And for really NYU and for both these teams, one thing especially we've been seeing in the professional scene, I mean, LEC comes to mind, is when you're early on, you might not – something's not clicking with your team, even if it's just on the day, not necessarily that, you know, you're inexperienced or haven't played together for a long time, just for any reason if something's not fitting together perfectly – the one thing that's always reliable to go back on is uh, stupid, simple, just easy compositions to run. You have an orange yeah. top lane, tons of engage, uh, reliable, easy to pile a champion, something too super uber mechanical or hard to play in team fights, like something like the Talon. And you go from there, and that makes it easy for you to play the games. You get dragons, you get soul, you get baron, you end the game. So you're telling Very me you want to see an Udyr this game? No, that is not what. That is not at all what I'm saying. <laughs> it's not horrible if it pops up. I, despite my general distaste for the champion, thinking it's more or less like a fairly useless pick, still does. It, I mean, it's it's not bad this patch, even in competitive scenes. So that's really just because Turbo Chem Tank is just an insane item. Yep. On this patch, pretty, pretty much. I'm a big fan of it. Every tank should basically be going Cam Tank, unless you're like Orn, where you don't really want to run at people. There's like a few Orn. I think Shen might be another one where it's iffy because you don't well, necessarily Well, Shen, Shen need can it. go a bunch of different items yeah. in this preseason now that he's not relegated to Titanic first anymore. And then, um, I don't know, there's a few other tanks that are just not on the top of my head that still you ne wouldn't necessarily just, like off tanks you know, necessarily. Just, just go Chem Tank on everyone, really, right? You know? I, I mean, it's a strategy. I'm not saying it's going to work if you run Chem Tank, Ezreal, but you can sure as heck try it. I'm not going to stop. Yeah, you. we're not at that point in the season where Ezreal just abuses a random item and it has to get nerfed because of Ezreal. We're not at that stage in the season yet. Not in that stage. Ezreal also supposed to be getting buffed next season, but buffs or not, we are getting into the draft here for Game 2. And I'm my basically, match point in Penn State is all I'm just predicting the same, same band. Same bands for the first round. And Olaf Pantheon, two of probably the most oppressive junglers. As it stands, Pantheon with his insane early ganking, point and click stun, damage potential, E, walkout. And then Olaf with the very fun item we like to call Gore Drinker. Yep, pretty much and makes then, him unstoppable even on 11 2, where the Gore Drinker is nerfed for Olaf specifically. He's already unstoppable He's with his ulti, so it's just double unstoppable. Uh, jeez. Diddly band away. Hecarim as yeah. well. Possibly looking for the first pick. Kaisa here once again. Wouldn't surprise me in the slightest unless they want to take away. Maybe something like the Camille might be another high priority. Yeah. Because I know Ice Flower favors the champion quite a bit in quite a few matchups. So Yeah, Camille only got banned in the... Camille got banned in the second phase. Yep. Where it's 
copy pasted ban from Game and, 1. And yeah, there's a crazy lock Copy pasted the draft. More Jin than Lilia. Lilia. Yep, Jin. I, I'm not sure if Lilia this early, but definitely the Jin. Yeah. Maybe you want to take away the Nautilus earlier on if you're the thinking handshake you're not going to go the Galio. Jin and Kaisa are definitely two of the premier ADCs. On oh, no, we will be the Lilia once again for Dave Alright. Have they learned? So with the Lilia, expecting another AD mid, AD top combination for Penn State to keep uh, their damage types nice and even out. It's the same thing you do with something like a Cinder mid, where you don't want any more AP on your team. You oh, just yeah. want to have them do the maximum amount of damage possible. And so, what are we going to see here from OIU? The Karthus, which got banned okay. away in phase so they're two. Act, they're getting their around. jungler of choice a bit earlier, earlier on, because they know Penn State would probably ban it out next phase anyway. And yeah, there'd and... be the Nautilus, much okay. more reliable okay. support than the Galio. I, like I definitely like this adaptation of New York, because you're leaving your solo laners up, because Penn State, unless they do some funky things in the they, they basically have to pick one of their solo laners by the time their next NY's next pick phase comes around. So they'll be able to counter pick at least one thing, depending. There could be funny flex picks, because those are always fun to have to analyze. Before we get into game, but yep. so just gonna sit on this last I'm expecting it to be support because you can put it up not you can put it up with knowing, but it is gonna be the Galio. Okay, so, so this we is do have where, a flex pick. This is where a Galio I think acceptable because you don't have your mid laner locked in. So you have to leave the other team thinking where this Galio is gonna be going. And a good thing about actually Galio and Nautilus is that if Nautilus tries if Nautilus hooks either you or your AD, you can channel the taunt, and then suddenly, they're not focusing your AD anymore, they're focusing on you. Yep, and there's and the force very... out Camille ban. Okay, so, again, good Camille ban, because you know they have Galio, and Galio Camille is like, we've seen it so many times in so many years, whenever it just crops up, you're just like, oh yeah, Galio Camille, I completely forgot the last... about that good old 2017 team top. Good yep. time. Good time. And the one thing I do want to point out now is for Penn State, you don't have that Camille option you normally get top lane. So to really get value out of a pick like Galio, yeah, he can be great for disengaged compositions, which is good against something like the Nautilus. But what is the other thing you can use to get in the middle of a team fight? Lilia, not that reliable when you have to get through a Nautilus. You're not really going to be able to get a good Galio all the time. So where is this well. dive going to come from that really makes Galio such a scary champion to deal with on the enemy team where you have to worry about it being I a disengaged see... source and an engage? I don't think Penn State picked their top lane here because you want to keep that Galio flexibility until the final pick. And this would okay. be a top laner Tec still. Technically. Oh, okay. okay. Well, that's definitely a top laner. I have feelings about Nar. I think it's fine in this case because you're not dealing with one of those junglers who likes Next to just game. run top lane and dive you over and over again. I'm, I'm, Nar, I just, I really don't like the champion. Inspectional play, that's a whole other issue. But this is a talent lock, and this point. is definitely still have the AD mid lane. Yeah, it's gonna be the okay. run back on the talent. You can supplement the idea of not needing one of those dive heavy junglers by picking a dive heavy mid laner. Where this talent, provided it's not gonna be something funny again in the mid lane, this talent can run top lane, and if Nar is in mini form, he dies to any. Turret dive as Monkey locked in. Yeah, and NYU putting up together a scary composition for team yeah. fighting. Lots of AoE, lots of CC Definitely for Kaisa like to it. deal with. Good peel. Oh, this. Okay. Oh, Zoe would be interesting here. I don't want to talk about it too yet because it's still a hover, but oh, yes, it is. Okay, okay. all right. Okay. So this is. Zoe is pretty much broken on this patch, for those of you who are not well acquainted with nice. the champion. Incredibly good. However, this okay. does mean the flex to Galio is in bot lane, which is a bit rough, because you have a losing AD carry matchup where Kaisa is going to win the early game against Jin. Now made more exemptly awful by the fact that Galio is down there. And not that Galio but is I a bad support, but it's just not very great. And very the thing about that is that Galio into Talon like talent into most melees is pretty rough especially against galio where you're not inherently tanky like someone like the set who can just sort of like stand there and fight the talent head on with galio you really need to 
get your items and all. And even then, you don't really want to be going Aftershock on Galio mid, which could help you fight the town. You want to be going something like Spellbook or Predator if you can roam around the map a bit better. So it definitely makes sense to put it down and support more whether or not that'll cause bot lane to have some issues is yet to be seen. We don't really know how they're going to play with it. But the Zoe pick <laughs> means mid lane is going to be very volatile. Absolutely. Depending on how Veil's about to play. He could go for Electrocute Ignite Zoe and just try to 1v1 the Talon, or he could go something like Teleport and Summer Spellbook. Either of those are viable for the Zoe. What I prefer to see from if we're looking at some itemization early on here from Loki Parkour, really hoping that he goes for something, um, what's it called? The Verdant Band, Verdant Crystal. It's a component, whatever the component of Banshees is. Um, uh, Verdant Barrier. Verdant Barrier, I thank you. Which will, because you have AP mid, AP jungle. So that's going to get a ton of value in the early game when you're yeah. trying to, as Talon, get pushed mid lane, be able to not get, you know, just completely chunked out by one straight paddle star, get out of lane, roam around the map, help out your Karthus when you're also dealing with a Lilia in the jungle as well. Yeah. Because this game, Penn State definitely forwarding a lot more AP, which is going to, I think, much more incentivize the MR purchases by maybe Wukong, by Talon, who has to deal with it more early on. I just Merc Tread though the optimal buy this game, no matter yeah, I guess what. How, really. I guess how I wouldn't buy Verdant Barrier because that's an AP item. That's dumb of me to say. That's just the one that comes to mind first. But something like a Merc Tread, something like a uh, just some early magic just down Hex Drinker. Zoe's insane on this patch because they just revamped her W uh, table of active she can get. They removed early level redemption, but they inputted a whole host of the mythic active into it. And especially in team fights, when you consider that most, if not every mythic, has an active part of it, that's more of them being popped in these team fights where Zoe can pick them up and sort of take them. And especially depending on the build, she can be very oppressive in lane if she goes something like Electrocute with the Ignite. Very easy to get sneaky kills. Or you go something like Summoner Spellbook, where you can afford to swap around your which then clocks your W and also Nimbus Cloak which just makes you very very fast and is overall just a really annoying champion to both play against in lane and then in team fight. So, yep. Also that's... just new itemization for Zoe is fantastic. Oh yeah. Way more magic pen than you ever used to on the old build path so you can go something like the Ludens which gives you um, percent which gives you flat pen as well as percent pen per legendary item. Sorcerer Shoes, which is flat pen. You then have the Void Staff available to you, which is percent pen. There's just so many more options for you to get. Like, it's going to take a significant amount of magic just to really not be taking true damage from this champion. Yeah. And I think that is something that NYU might have a hard time dealing with if you don't see any of that early itemization against it. Now, you do yeah. have the Lilia there, so it's going to incentivize it a little bit more than it might have otherwise, but even still, Veil, especially just as... The Penn State Midland, very experienced on this champion, has been a target ban in the past, so I'm looking to see really good stuff out of this Zoe performance here in Game 2. Penn State looking to close it out. 2-0 over NYU. Going to be that Electrocute Ignite Zoe that I had talked about. So going to be definitely looking to play forward against this Talon. Not something you really hear often, but it can definitely be done, especially as Zoe where every recast of your Q actually gives you a proc of your passive. So you Q once to send it flying backwards, auto, send it back, you get that second auto, and it's a lot of damage, especially coupled with Electrocute and Ignite. This game is going to be NYU looking for the 5 got an invade. invade. Yep, I'm going through that bottom side. Panhandler is currently alone. Okay, important board. to note that NY definitely coordinated their skins in Champions Select because the color screen is beautiful. Uh, Panhandler going to spot out the invade, not going to fall victim, no flash Double burn. ward. Just going to be a double ward on the blue buff, so we'll see. And that's very good because now, as New York, you're going to know that Lilia is probably not going to be starting down there anyway. And you'll know where she's starting, not necessarily where she's going, 
But in these early games, the star position is just as important as sort of like middle staff. So with Karthus example. starting topside here, um, Penn State doesn't, I don't think, have any vision on to the blue side, but they can assume, based on how Karthus' mana pool goes, that, um, oh, and we have a pause, so I'll just continue um, talking about it. Anyway, what I hope to see from Deja Vu here, assuming that, um, if he can assume that Karthus is starting blue side just based on the champion, do the red buff with Nar, Raptors, transition gank mid lane, and just do the enemy Raptors. Yeah. Because Karthus Karthus is going to have to go for full clear topside and take away. A summoner has disconnected. Yeah. Karthus full clears are very, very good because Q is very low cooldown, big single target, damage is such as he levels up. And full clearing is gen generally the most efficient way to go about your jungle because if you can get all six of the camp before anything happens, you hit level four and then you can walk to the scuttle of your choice. But that's only if you command to do blue, red, gromp, wolves, raptors, and then you take the time out of your day to fight down each Krug individually. Most of the time, on most junglers, that would take way too long, so they mostly just hit level 3, then take the scuttle, and then go back. But on champions like Lilia and even Karthus, where their AoE damage is pretty high, full clears are definitely the most optimal thing to do for them, because you get more money, and then... By the time it takes you to do the scuttle, which definitely takes a while because none of them have built-in CC to break the shield, so it's a bit tankier. By the time you can take the scuttle and recall and get some items, your your jungle is back up already, so you just go back to power farming. Yep. So it's definitely going to be interesting to see jungle pathing, especially as someone who is so susceptible to early invades like a Karthus and someone who can move really fast around the jungle like the Lilia. As uh we get unpaused. I'm unpaused here. Loki Parkour not gonna be too happy about that as he takes a little spell to the face, but either event. Still just starting out here. Mirror starts for both of the junglers as we had mentioned. Lilia. Oh they're gonna go for so they're not gonna go for the uh Raptor Steel instead they're just gonna do full clear of top side going for the Krugs. I think this is I think this is fine because your Lilia, if you keep your passive stacked up, you're really fast walking around the jungle anyway, so you don't lose a lot of time walking as much as Karthus would. Karthus has been very just immobile in general. So we can see that because Karthus started top side on blue side, Gromp, Gromp is a lot easier to take down with your single target Q damage than the Krugs would be. So he hit level 3 earlier and moved on to second buff faster. Yep, Mill laying the bubble here onto Loki Parkour, going about for an even trade as Ignite comes down. Loki Parkour going to go down! First Blood solo kill in the mid lane for Bale, the overcommit from Loki Parkour. Now the bot lane, now we're looking for a kill on to need to get better. The re for the Ignite picking! Oh no! Then that's a flat hook, Panhandler instead going in. That just a one auto attack away, Panhandler though. Not going to commit for it. Burns the flash from the Nautilus. And a very close to the the bot lane that comes out just about even on some of the... But there's a... The there's a deer! Yep, okay, Lily coming down. Carthage is there as well. No flash, though. We are still topside. <laughs> With the camera. Yep, yeah, it's going to be and... the disengage here. Oh, no! The hook what lands the on the panhandler! An extra Matic able to grab a kill. They're going to look for the ring and try to get something out of this. Need to get better, though. Ticking down. Flash for a double kill! For extra Matic, Deja Vu finally grabs the kill on the Karthus. Now he's got to deal with two more. The Deer trying to grab away, but he can't tighten the anchor. Oh my lord. The lead able to grab another kill. And that is three kills this time for the NYU Also, Flash lane. burn from Ice Flower in the top lane. Yeah, and that was another very important thing to talk about the jungle path. And because they both opted to full clear from the top lane, they both... Oh, Flash burn from Selenic, but it's too much. Uh, Ice Flower able to kite away. That's the... Uh, if he had if he had a Doran's blade, that was a dead gnar, but he had the shield. But Talon uh, looking yeah, Talon, to avenge his friend. Just gonna give it over to his laner, not gonna give it to the uh, Talon. Anyway, Probably because fine. both of the junglers full clear top to bottom, they both ended up bot lane at the same time, and that was just a very extended bot lane fight. 
and teleport. Yeah, I saw. Looking for down here with Deja Vu. Find the huge card. You know, Stunts is coming up. Trigger Seed, though, does not land. And now Selenix is for the re-engage. Ice Flower going very low. Great use of Carthage. You're doing so Carthage. much work on the Deja Vu. Loki Parkour trying to get in. Bale going to head him up for now. Bale flashing forward. Not to be killed. The bubble doesn't land. And Selenix able to grab the turn kill down. Now Doubt looking forward onto Ice Flower. Just trying to get to this wall to jump over. Finally grabs the hop and bot lane. We got more action. As extra Maddox booted up with the Deadly Flourish. Ends up being one for nothing top side of the map. Another good collapse by NYU. To continue to I punish have to give props. I gotta give props to Doubt there for in such a hectic fight. He's always landing not only just Qs, but single target Qs. With the extra added damage there. Very good fight. Sort of prompted by the fact that... Ice Flyer teleports onto a ward in the bush as Cursus is clearing the Scuttle Crab and it sort of invites the 3v3 top Ooh. side of the map. I look to sell like the level down. is getting a big chunk out with the initial. Yeah. The important thing here is that Wukong still has to teleport because the fight just so happened to happen in the top side jungle when he was walking there anyway. So gonna be losing, forced to lose some EXP and CS, but it's fine because he has some teleport up there. So, turning his uh, unfortunate solo kill in the top lane into, you know, it worked out in the end. He did manage to pick up two kills. So, and he's not even gonna use his teleport because he knows no need to. Nar will be le two levels up, but that's nothing that sitting under turret and farming can't easily solve. Karthus, nothing in the jungle to do, so he's just gonna soak the EXP bot lane to get level. Might as well. You love it. Because now he can recall here, and then his blue buff will be coming up, which means the rest of his top side jungle should be spawning as well. Yep. And it's important to see that no early dragon this game. Probably due to the fact that it's pretty difficult to do that on Lilia and especially difficult to do it on Karthus when you don't have priority in any of your lanes. Karthus has level 6 by the way. Requiem is available so this blue buff invade might turn out pretty poorly for Penn State given another over the mid. Good thing Karthus. Deja Vu though. Bale's gonna look for it. Bubble instead hits the blue buff. Fight goes the way of Deja Vu sure, early on the side of Doubt. Low-key parkour not able to get there in time to contest so Penn State gonna steal away some but try to get some. On the bright side, as he does have his lost chapter, so it will be giving him some good mana when he levels up. And on the bright side, your entire jungle is still coming up as Karthus, so... Sure, you lose the blue buff, but it went to the Lilia, who's mostly gonna still be farming anyway. It didn't go to someone like Zoe, who is very oppressive, with a blue buff. Uh, Ooh, ultimate from Icefire chunks selling at Grey but has six now, so... Too bad, does avoid a lot of the follow-up damage with yeah. the clone. That's something you can sort of do with Gnar a lot, with previous buffs to his ultimate cooldown. The lead is up here for this crab fight. So keep our course, just left, Bail goes in, grabs a good chunk off the Talon, but now it's be careful with the wall. Pain comes out, platform from Dewey, finds it on the Bail. Good wall. There you go, Loki Parkour, the beneficiary of the kill, and a great roam from the NYU support. Yeah. That was a really heads up play from Dawid there. Knowing the fact that his Kai'Sa can very easily just play back a bit. And the fact that Karthus had just finished his top side and Scuttle was spawning. He's like, hey Nautilus, come on up. Great wall of pain placement as well to sort of slow Veil. With no summoners, it's a very easy follow up hook. As they're gonna pay back that blue invade with a bit of extra change perhaps. Nope. Uh, nope, they're gonna kill away. They don't know where Zoe is. They see Galio is roamed up. Karthus has an entire bot side jungle to farm. He's got things to do. Ooh, Nar going in on Selenix does not find the sun, though, so he's able to just kite it out. And Panhandle hooks into the bot lane. Dredgeline does connect the lead. Going now on to Galio. Killer is a fast taunt. An extra Matic grabs the kill. Well played. Once That's again, NYU's bot lane. Showing why Nautilus, uh,. You know what, it's just Nautilus a better is definitely a good champion. That right there was also sort of a consequence of that Nautilus run, because Kaiser did get solo oh, EXP. Need to get better than that. And 
Kaisa hit level 6 first and could use her Killer Instinct to reposition out of getting hit by the Galio taunt. As the fact that Zoe has a locket just shows the W changes. And not like Talon would probably want to go in on this anyway. She's definitely going to level down. And Zoe does have the Seeker, so probably wouldn't result in much anyway. He has a Vitality item, so yep, not going to be Gore Drink the Tile in this game. Probably for the best, there's a lot more squishy people on the side. Can save this game, maybe can one shot if he gets to that stage in the game. Definitely going to be much more effective on the side Talon. You have Zoe, he's going to be pretty squishy. Jin, uh, Nara, when you're uh, mini Nar is pretty one shotable if you have the right combo skills, which I'm sure that even, all these players can pull off. Even Galio, depending on its skills, if he has the, the mirror right now, so it's no armor, Galio can be unreasonably squishy for the time, depending on it, the build in the future. And the Rift Hills trade, just rotating the top side of the lane yep, liking over. this from Penn State, trying to get some objectives to try to get their self back on course in this match. Uh, Bot lane rotating mid lane. They're picking to fight yeah. this one. I don't think they can. I don't think fighting is a good idea. I think you just push the mid wave. No, they're going to lose a whole wave bot side for that, so really questionable. Yeah, on I'd say I think yeah. they, were they were trying to call up for Rift Hail, but they should have pushed out bot lane first. I think... Very strange play call there. If there wasn't that ward in that river brush there, and they walked up, maybe Veil and then Deja Vu take the riskier path and walk through mid lane back to safety instead of Ooh, going the safe way. Will he get out? Ults the clone, the taunt far off, and no. Zelenic re engaging, but that might be his best okay, that was... shutdown on the Galio. That was. He was out, and then he, uh... He was out, but then he went back in. Decided to I think that was, that was... That was the case of him being like, Yeah, I can... I outplayed you guys. Now watch me outplay you even more. But... Fortunately, uh... Wasn't the smartest idea. Yeah, and still probably not even... Super worth it on Penn State. The kill going over to an Imperial Mandate. What yeah, I think should happen here is... I think we're, we're going to teleport to a bot lane minion to try to get this turret. Uh, top of dirt, certainly going down. Okay, so now it's looking like Penn State Oh, Bubble misses out of Veil, so it might be some trouble here. Requiem coming down as well. Teleport in from Selenix. He's gonna look for the ring he's on the ice lab. But Deja Vu still in the area means that even if Loki Parkour comes up, it's still not a fight they might not want to take. And yeah, Deja Vu I... cleans up. I think a bit of miscommunication there from the mid lane and yeah. top laner. As now... I think my teleport would have been better served bot lane. Try to, like, get the turret actually. Ooh! Curtain call. Curtain looking call. for the weed. Grabs it! With the engage from need to get better now, Eschematic going forward has going to dodge away from the deadly flourish and the heal to get need to get better out of the sticky situation. Penn State finally finding something in this bottom lane for Panhandler. Might be like Kaisa didn't here. die. Kaisa did not die there and did get a bunch of plates from their play, so Nautilus dying. It's not optimal, but it's not the worst thing that could have happened from that play. As... Remember, we talked about Kentake on everyone, but how about a uh, Gore Drink or Zoe? Gore Drink. Uh, not the best. From the, uh, play. From Definitely the w, helps. So. Uh, helps in the anyway, challenge. Anyway, Dragon. Dragon spawn in 20 seconds. Would you believe me if I told you that it's Mountain first and then Infernal again? That's what happened last game. No, I'm sure All right. it is. Penn State going to finally start to push in here, try to get some vision control. Panhandler is just coming out from base, so Penn State going to be very staggered toward this dragon spawn. They're bringing the top laner down already, clearing out mid lane, trying to get as much priority as they can, but... Are you feeling Ocean Rift or Cloud Rift this game? I'm going to say Ocean. I, I'm, no, I'm feeling Cloud Rift, so that way Karthus can get oh, three Oh, Penn State is trying to stop Panhandler, and yeah. So we can try to punish the engage, goes in, gets on up. Talon's behind. Down. Talon goes in behind and finds the jungler. Loki Parkour doing good That's work, you. and he's out as well. There is no spite available for Penn State. Vale doesn't have it. He has the black on the Wukong as well. Yep, he's get better. Going back in. The drag going fall does go the way of NYU, and now Selenix is going to bring it. Drowsy down for the shutdown for extra. Already grabbing one. Panhandler going to be quick to follow here, but no. Ice Flower grabs the ultimate. Is able to grab away with Megan R. Panhandler does go down. Yep. Extra Maddox. 
double kill for the Kaisei yet again. And Penn State going you know, two for one as well as the Dragon. That was that was an interesting play. Really heads up from the weed on the Nautilus there to sort of like say, hey, they they're just starting it, and I can get an easy hook on this Lilia. And then the one shot lethality talent from the backside gets Lilia and even gets out after they use Galio ult to try to stop him. Yeah, Galio ult and Lilia ult both going down onto the Nautilus. Yo, Annie's out of there with the hex flash. Yeah, very good play from Talon to be able to get out of that as well. And then it leaves the rest of the team to clean up the fight, which they do. And this Kaisa is sitting very, very pretty. 5-0-1. Oh, Big bounty on the lead. Probably going to go back and get her mythic item of choice. Very big play. And they're up two dragons now. Meaning this next one in about three and a half. All the more important because it puts you on soul point if you do manage to grab it. Yeah, man. Loki Parkour, Loki for Panhaler has a Rectum as well, so he's gonna get the ADC very low, but the sleep comes through the shutdown for Panhandler. Has to burn a few summoners to get through it, but whatever makes it happen, and I mean, this is what we're seeing right now. Penn State, they're behind, and it's been so oh. far overextensions by NYU that have caused a lot yeah. of these kills. You see the two solo kills and then a top lane. Or the limit testing, if you will, of the NYU. I'd call that players. limit testing. But I, I think that's a good play in in isolation, just because that's what you you have Talon who wants to do that in anyway. Plus, they have Carpet for the extra uh, insurance to get those kills. So like. That'll work out later in the game when Talon and Karthus are a lot stronger. Because right now they're still only sitting at the mythic item as Ice Flower. Look for a pick on a win. I'm not sure they know everyone is here. Yeah, Ice Flower is going to get booted up and immediately burst down. Minimar. Only on a Deja Vu to try to follow it. Deadly Flare is going to stall Selenic as, as well as the heroes entering. Very early on. And they're going to immediately is... start the Rift Tower, it looks like. Uh, Karthus is power farming down there. Gets an entire. Gets that bot lane turret gold all to yeah, him. Panhandler, they're looking for Loki Parkour. Pops up to try to get away as he needs to get better to ease right in. How do you get ulti? Rain. That's one of the greatest powers of Talon ulti is that you can use it and then they just don't know where you are. As and Kaisa. Ends up being an NYU pick so far. This is a continued posture here. Well, tank comes out. We're on our fight to start off. Penta's gonna go for it. They have the drowsy on to Carthus. He goes to sleep. Looks like gonna get it away. Go out. Find some time, and I thought able to clear out the kill. Barely dodged away. No doubt finds it with the burn so much damage. DLT. That was that was an insane Dale Force from Pen Handler to tank the Kaisa W. Not yep. like it matter because he died to Leandre's Leandre anyway, but uh, there's a lot going on. Yep, it ends up still being a two for one in favor of NYU. Penn State does manage to force on the mid lane turret though, so still keeping up in the map pressure and in gold so far, but looking at Extramatic, just getting more and more of a problem. Kraken Slayer completely still the validity, and now it is actually going to be NYU who starts at the risk tail, knowing Penn State has to reset off the back end. Of that. Uh, that's sort of the price of those big extended fights where at the end one team can get a turret, they're like, okay, we're good, we can reach that now, but that leaves up the Rift Herald for NYU, and crucially, it's at a point where they can fight to get onto Soul Point, so what I'd like to see them do is set up around the Dragon, and then place that Rift Herald mid lane, and be like, okay, we can either reacquire some ground in this game with this mid lane turret, or you can give us this third Dragon, which puts us at Soul Point, so I'd like to see that. And uh, important to note that New York has the teleport advantage. Wukong has teleport, while Ice Flower does not. Uh, you got to bring that a lot earlier. Nautilus is just hanging out mid lane, saying hello to Jen. As everyone else goes up. As a reminder, this is the point in the game where PSU really blew open its last game. Now did have a bit of a different situation yeah. going on. So still that opportunity here, but we're going to have to pretty much see, I think, more or less a perfect fight out of Penn State. They don't really have the best of engage outside of Ice Flower getting in with some kind of Meganar. 
because Lilia pretty much has to do all the work herself. Otherwise, with Galio coming in over top. Teams are playing it very reserved because they know a move that doesn't really work out for the best results in the game just getting bursted yeah. wide open And there. I think they need to get more vision control. There's still a bunch of wards here from NYU in the pit and around the pit. Want to see them clear out this vision, get the vision over the top. This is Zoe good. can really do her job. Good curse is to onto Lilia, actually. Good dodging from the Nautilus as well. Stay away. That forces the state out of the pit for now, so NYU with an opportunity to try to regain some control as they'll still look, still yeah. trying to find these paddle stars. That is the He is relatively lowest on mana. So yep, that could end up being dragon. Zoe going around very far on the flank, so they might be outnumbered here off the initial go about. Now it's telling Book Thing H5-2 with the up front. Now the dragon comes down. Ice Flower almost at that Mega Nar. Has it charged up, has the range, finds the ulti, but it's only on the Nautilus. Dragon goes over to NYU, and now the Rex is coming down, trying to find the kills where they can. Bale going very low. Deja Vu almost taken out. Finally falls to the burn damage off Leandres. Ends up being one for two. But the Dragon, more importantly, over to NYU. And the mid lane turret. Like I said, I wanted them to put the Herald down mid at the third Dragon fight, and then force Penn State to make a decision about that. And it worked. They forced Penn State back into their jungle choke point. And then that lets New York Free Fire on the Dragon get to full point, get mid lane turret, and even wrap up a kill in the end for the card set. That he's just going right back to farming. Almost that two items gonna be very impactful for that extra ability hey, from the Leandries, the mythic passes. Kaisa also still sending that two items, still deathless. So far, it's where a lot of the damage is going to be coming from. You really want to try to see if they can, like, scrounge up some Zoe Poke into Lilia's sleep onto Kaisa and try to take her down. And for now, it's just probably going to be a nice little uh, slow burn till Dragon, where that's when you can really force Penn State into a decision. You can't say Gotta go for that soul, especially when it's an ocean. Selenic put the sleep in the bottom lane. Need to watch out, gonna connect. Selenic gonna go very low, and Deja Vu right, right, right. eventually able to grab the kill, but a lot of things up there, and now Dra I don't think that's a good idea. Nope, they just don't have the numbers currently to start it. Karth Deja is Vu already going up. Yep, he's got, he got his Zonyas, though. He's got the double stasis. He has Zonyas, and they also still have the stopwatch going. Very huge, actually, because... That can bait Penn State into trying to get the Karthus after he uses one, but then he's just got another. And in between all that, his E is still ticking down, so... Very, very important. Yep, nice flower just gonna continue uh, to... He's also a level up on the Lilia. Yeah, that's power farming for sure. Definitely can't be understated how important level differences in junglers are as we get to the point where these big objectives are coming up. Ice Fire gonna be able to secure that bot lane tier one finally. He gets split pushing in here. Does have a fair CS lead as well over his opponent. Not that it matters too much to the point. That CS lead is uh, made a, made up for in the CS difference in mid lane actually. Yep. About 30 in both ends. As Lilia does hit, does have two items as well as Karthus. Going for that Specter's Cowl third item. So that's been interesting by probably looking to not take as much damage from Stray Carpet ability as teams are setting up near the Baron. Yep, that no, was an uh, interesting hitbox. Put to sleep in so midair, you know. Just it's, it's Zoe. She's a some it's kind like, of it's semi like when you it's like when you take a nap on a plane ride. You're you're in the air and you're also <laughs> sleeping. Just just because you're doing one doesn't mean you can't do the other. Whether or not Talon's parkour is equivalent to being in an airplane is uh, yet to be discussed. Don't think about that too much. As yep, dragon can be up here in about a minute's time. So if we ignore turrets and dragons, everything is basically even this game. With gold lead being very even. Yep. And it is going to be NYU who gets to clear out this vision first as 5. Penn State 
still looking for some players to Most reset. Most teleports are off as well. That's this very important. Galio does reset here. This is going to be a very awkward team fight for Mr. Play as he Loki Parkour looks to go. Man, he's gone! Really? And now Bale as well! Whoa. The killer instinct! The assassins on full display and now NYU who's looking to contest the third turn for the fourth dragon. Gonna look for the soul. Now it's just gonna go for the bear, which I'm not sure if it's a good call. Penn State just trade the bear and gotta go for Drake at this point, but they're gonna go look for it. Try to find Loki Parkour is very low. Kong Finally is doing pops good the job rocket. Out. This is just going here and try to do that. Bar and flash in from Galio, but his team isn't with him. He's gonna buy some time with the zone. Yes, Ice Flower has a mega, but is neglecting to go in. Loki Parkour instead going on a killing spree and now it's Baron and Dragon pretty much assuredly for NYU. Panhandler and Bale going to be popping up here at the moment, but still pretty much everything available. So close there of Loki Parkour almost with the ulti back. Up, I extra dramatic, about halfway to the clear instant. at the Talon just going at a clean 90 degree angle to kill the Dewey, gym there. The flash of the wall finds Deja Vu immediately popping the Zonyas. He's doing his job there. Yeah, that's the people really out of Soul is acquired. NYU now looking for the re-engage, helping on to the star. Ekmatico's godlike. Really gonna be burning low. Double kill for the Kaisa. 8, 0, and 5. You have uh, fair enough minions. You have the Ocean have Soul. Ocean what else? Soul. What a... What else does NYU need really at this point to end the game? Uh, uh, pretty much the gold lead. Maybe. Carpet. 1 kill. Yep. That so hook was e back dangerously forward. close. Take another defile. And now they're gonna look for it. Do we look at the hook? But it's still gonna be Loki Parkour going for it. Silly Flourish does connect with the snowball damage to be had. So he does find the trouble bubble here. He's gonna grab another pile start over the top, but doesn't do enough damage. And now pushing on to the this inhibitor is, turret. This is the type of play that New York wanted to do last game with the Talon and Kaisa and big CC support. We gotta be able to get through that trouble. Penn State looking for something, something to trade back. They're gonna go in off the Deja Vu's ultimate. Come Drowsy in, coming down on two. Now gonna go into the first stopwatch now. Zelnik looking for the flank. You get better to caught out, destroy it. Ekmatic goes legendary. Flank from Zelnik zoning off three. Now the Requiem comes through. Van Handler goes down. Talon, they grab another one. Loki Park goes going. And Penn State in the fight of desperation. Remember when I had brought up the fact. anyone. Karthus had two spaces there, so he just walks into Penn State and is like, yeah, walk through my defile. I dare you. And it works. And yeah, and now going to score another re Wild Wilde finds himself on the day job. Loki Parkour diving in, pops nice to bail, but he's surrounded alone and back in the fountain he goes. Might be joined here by his fellow teammates. Nice Flower has a Megan arm, but not much to do with it. Galio trying to just get away. They're doing what they can. The stall is for not Ice Flower going down. And that is NYU fighting back in game two. They'll drop the Nexus, no and it is match point game three. What a comeback for New York, showing that that game one means absolutely nothing. They run it back with... Uh, the Kaisa and Talon again, and this time it actually shows in what their plan was. Absolutely insane play for that game. I'd say on the back of actually being able to get a jungler like the Karthus to where he yep. can just sort of sit back. If Talon goes in, he just presses R and Talon says, thank you very much for the kills. I asked for a simple, easy, stupid composition out of NYU, and besides really the talent, that is what we got. Nautilus, Wukong, Karthus, Kaisa, all these peop people, all these champions have very straightforward ways to play the game. Of I... course, you still have the expression to have with it, but, I mean, the team fighting was just exquisite. Penn State, they had so much trouble finding anything. Galio couldn't really get in. They had no way to efficiently invade without Meganar. Deja Vu had to walk forward as Lilia before he anyone else could and he get caught out by a straight dread line they're just it was so hard for Penn State to play the game especially from an even footing and then extra magic just the beneficiary of pretty much all their teams early goal yeah. snowballing completely out of control NYU able to just put her home and I think the biggest adaptation I'd like to see from both of these teams here going into game three is before we draft Galio support can we get Camille can we get something that Galio actually wants to play with 
and then let's put it forward. Because it seems to me that that champion just is not the most useful in this series. Yeah, I will say that we definitely looked way better on the Nautilus than the Galio. I'm not too sure if that's just because he prefers Nautilus to Galio, or maybe Galio is just a bad champion for this series, like you had said. But night and day for New York University there in that game, too. Going to be really, really excited to see how we decide to adapt to game three. As maybe, will New York stay on blue side? Will Camille still be banned? Will we pick Galio for a third game in the row? And so many questions yet to be answered. Will Galio stay at a 0% win rate on the day? Find That's out next the... time as uh, we wait for lobby creation.
All right, welcome one, welcome all back for game three. Match point winner takes all of Penn State Division One versus New York University. So we're waiting on draft here in this final game. Two bangers so far. Penn State oh, smashing game one pretty hard, and NYU the same in game two. So, so by logic, this third game is going to be extremely, extremely close back and forth, and we won't know who wins until the Nexus explodes. Pretty right? That, that, that's how it works? Uh, actually, correction, if I'm watching draft and I see Gallio on one team without <laughs> a meal or guaranteed engage, I, I don't even have to flip the coin. I know who's going to win. It's going to be not them. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. It's going to be not them. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, in case you're just joining us for game three, Important things we learned from the draft from the previous two games that Galio is apparently a bad champion. Bad support. Uh, a bad support. Support champion. Without engaged champions. A bad support when you don't have something to kick off the fight. Um We're most likely, considering the fact that New York is still on Blue we're likely going to be seeing a uh, Olaf rumble. And then Nidalee ban on blue side. Yep. Um, and then Pantheon. Zed. Pan pa Ooh, may may maybe even something like like a Akram, maybe. Oh, maybe, maybe an maybe. Evelyn. We might, we might get really out Who of the knows? comfort zone and and ban the and ban the. Maybe Akram someone hitters. just bans the Galio. You know. I mean, I'm not sure why you'd waste the ban slot, but if it's feel if you feel like you really don't want to ban out something that's legitimately going to be game changing, I mean, maybe that's just something you want to do. <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe the Nautilus though. Maybe Nautilus, Nautilus, would, gets Nautilus would be a legitimate ban because we've Second seen phase at least, not first phase. First phase is just yep. banning every single jungler in the game at this point. Yep, we've seen that. Um, NYU is very, very happy to pick up that Kaisa first pick on blue side. So that might also be something that Penn State considers in their ban phase for this time around. But we'll have to see how it goes here, as we're still waiting for ready ups. Yep. And we are into Oops. draft. Wrong screen. Yep, Olaf banned away. Who would have thunk it? Oh, never, never would have seen that coming. Not in a million years would have imagined that one. Pantheon okay, also Pantheon hit the bench. No, 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 wow, what, we're, what, we're what amazing at this. Where are we at? All right, Olaf, show me the Rumble Pantheon. Ban. Rumble Ban. Come on. They're taking their time on this one. It's pretty... Uh... They're, they're thinking about it. Should we ban Rumble now or should oh, we there do it? Oh, there you go. All right. Oh, my good. God. Rumble ban is in. All right. Looking for Hecarim. Do I see a Hecarim? I'm, I'm betting Evelyn here. I'm betting or Evelyn. Evelyn. Oh, yeah. They have been banning Evelyn as well. Yep. Hecarim or Evelyn. It is the Hecarim. Okay. Well, there's Hecarim. There's Hecarim. All right. Nidalee. Wild shot in the dark. Nidalee, Nidalee. ban here. Yep. Yep. There Whoa. we go. Nidalee All right. ban. I'm, I'm betting Evelyn. Evelyn. Nope, they're gonna oh, ban the okay. Kaisa. They're gonna adaptation. Take adaptation, which means this sh more than likely is going to be the Jin pickup for um, NYU. We have not seen extra Matic on that champion yet today. Still very and solid, going, and that will be the question if this is the Jin lock in. What is PSU gonna counter with in the bot lane? Is this is Jin when they finally. This is this is the game. This is the Galio Camille game. No, it's oh, not. First I'm a fan. I like this. Because you know that if you leave support open to second round, it's probably either getting picked or banned before you. And with how much priority we saw in it in the first two games, and especially with the Kaisa ban, it makes the most sense to if you don't want to show off too much of your hand already to this first pick Nautilus. It's been very, very powerful in these games. So. I will agree, but you're still leaving Pensac open with a lot of options now for their yeah. bot lane. Um, Nautilus Blind okay. does rule out Jin something like Lilia. the Aphelios. Would that, would that be, is that too crazy a thing to predict Jin Lilia for the third game in a row? Uh, Jin Elise, Elise has been received some not the best champion right now, but is the pocket pick for Deja Vu. Yeah, so I'll accept pocket pick. In. I'm not entirely sure how well Elise performs nowadays with all the item changes. I'm she was good for a while and they nerfed, um, stuff on her Q, I believe. Yeah, okay. I'm not, I'm not entirely sure how well. She's a she lot of nowadays. burst with the Night Harvester build. Yeah. Lots of burst and card that's going to be the answer here. Not necessarily 
best in the 1v1, but definitely showed a lot of use it in that worked last, last game. game so with I'm, all a, I'm the a fan. Files, with the Requiems. I'm a fan because you know that PSU locked in their jungler, so if you keep your jungler until phase two, they're just gonna ban it out anyway, so it's pretty easy to match jungler here as third pick. Oh, Samira would be definitely Samira something Samira. on the spicier side of the rift. Yeah, and locked in. Very strong AD carry about still. This? I subscribe, I believe Dublift said this one time about Samira, is that she either gets the head or she's weak. As okay, we have locked in Camille. I love this pick from Pense because now it does open up the option for you to flex Galio mid support. Galio, R4 support R4 Galio here is Giga Smurfing from Penn State. You have it mid lane support flex. You have the Camille, so you actually have a reason to pick Galio. Any truths in chat after that one? Okay, will New York see? into the future with their magical eyes in 4C and ban the Galio here. I hope so. Galio ban here would not be as troll as previously predicted, given the circumstances. All right, come on. They're gonna ban Rel instead. Ah. Well, one day I'll be able to cast a Rel game. One day. I, I think Rel Actually, definitely- is good in Adalus too, because you can eliminate the shield as well with the uh, Rel definitely serves sort of the same purpose as Galio because you just sort of keep everybody clumped in together for the some for your team to engage. Yep. We're not getting it's another def ban away. Rel is definitely like primary engage compared to Galio secondary engage. Ban the Galio. Come on. You're ban you already banned out one support, I know you can ban out another one. More mid lane as well, Vale does has played Galio in the past, and yep, uh, there is the Galio ban. All right. So now it's going to be a completely close game with team fights going back and forth and no one being able to be crowned winner until 40 minutes in, right? Now that the Galio is there. Now Pensy's still probably going to look for their support lock in here. Leona, very strong. Yeah. That's fine. Would be pretty much a handshake, I think, in lane with the Nautilus based on who engages first. Yeah. That feels so just going to go for the 1v1 skill matchup. Important to note is that if Samira W functions the same way as Yasuo W, like in all cases, if Camille's on top of you and she tries to hookshot away, you can W and block the hookshot coming out of her. Not like it'll happen probably at all this game, but just a little mini interaction. As I'm not gonna talk about any of these hovers. Don't, just don't even bother. Wait till, uh, it's gonna oh, be oh, okay. all right. Okay. Full so, solo queue time, guys. It is a solo queue for NYU. Set mid here would be a bit of an interesting pick. It does okay into Zed. Zed's a bit different than the Talon match because Zed does have a lot more range. Given yeah. the uh, Q shirking, but... And energy as yep. opposed to mana, so he doesn't have to worry about using all right. of his resources to push the wave, but... Uh, I think, uh, See, this is what happens. We, we ban the Galio, and then Champion Select just gets crazy after that. Galio was the limiter. I actually really like the composition here that NYU's put together. Still, great team fighting composition. I think it hinges a little bit on um, Zed not being useless. Uh, as long as That's Zed can fair. pretty much one shot Jin or Elise, or at least do enough damage to Camille the where problem? Samira or Karthus can really get in there. Uh, you do have something that can cause a lot of chaos in the back line, but. Riven, Karthus, Samira, Naz, all these champions are going to be super effective in team fights. Riven's also now a scaling champion in Season 11 for some unknown reason. And then Pensei kind of same thing on their side. They have split push factor. They can do a 1-3-1 with Camille and Set. You have the Elise for pick making with Camille and Jin. Leona also is very good at pick. So I think you have a bit more options how you can play the game when you're Penn State. But still a fairly decent team fight nonetheless. I'm just looking yeah. for Penn State, I think, with an Elise jungle over the Karthus jungle. Really want to see Penn State push that top side of the map early on and get this Elise ahead so that she's still with, relevant with, against Karthus. I want to see need to get better just like at a point when Jin can be safe in lane. I just want to see Leona and Elise walking around. It'll be like a buddy cop move. They're just walking around. If they find anybody, they cocoon into all of Leona's abilities and then just kill someone. I think that's definitely going to be very important. And I 
think that's definitely why they would pick the Leona here because she's very good with a champion like Elise who can set up CC. Leona can set it up or follow it up. It doesn't matter. Leona's just that good a champion. Yep. And it's going to be interesting pretty, to see how the draft plays And yeah, both out. these cops, I think Pente's a little bit... Both these cops have, I want to say they're simple stupid cops. There's some champions in there like Zed and Elise, which require a little bit more technical know-how to be able to play team fighting, to be able to play the mid game, late game, that sort of thing. So definitely not the easiest compositions to execute on, but fairly straightforward, I think, in each of these teams' win conditions, which is very important for playing out the game. If you're NYU, you can just go team fight a whole bunch. If you want to, I mean, you do have split push options with the Ribbon, with the Zed, who can still answer something like the Camille and Set if they're not like super far behind. So it's not like you're super damned if you, damned if you don't in that regard. But Pesce definitely has a lot of different options. You can go into the top lane with Camille, split push while your team uh, 4v4, 4v5s, or try to do picks in the jungle. Again, if you have Leona there as well. So both of these teams draft themselves a lot of different yeah. tools, and it's going to depend on how this these matches kind of handle. I think Panhandler uh, on the Jing will be having a very rough time this game against Riven and Zed, two champions which have oh, oh, no. very good backline access, I'd say, uh, with Riven yeah. kind of flopping around, and Zed with the um, death mark. It's going to be very hard to deal with, especially when you have a Requiem to back it up. There's not going to be a lot of near-death escapes this time around. It has to be very good positioning, mm -hmm. very good peel out of the side of Vale, and need to get better to really keep her in the green when it comes to, again, these dragon fights. Because one thing we saw that really helped NYU in the last game was they were able to force around dragon all the time with how they were coming off of uh, Unified Reset, with how they always had bot lane advantage. They forced Penn State to take a bad team fight when their comp really didn't want to team fight that much. And then we were able to snowball the game out of, out of control based on that. Because it was even in gold that game, even up to the dragon sword. And then after that team fight, it was blown wide open. Also, a very important thing is that New York has invested heavily into attack damage. Not just attack damage in general, but attack damage carrying with Riven, Zed, and Samira. Yeah, you have Karthus, who will do massive damage because MR is not very helpful this game. But against someone like the Sat, who's probably just going to go straight full armor and then get like a random MR item in there. It's gonna be very difficult to take those characters down when we get into these late game team fights. As yep, just pause on pause on arrival here. Pause, pause immediately. So so what what would you like to talk about with what little information us spectators are allowed to have based on the game as it stands? Karth is going blue smite, at least going red smite. I uh, know, we pro probably, I'd assume Penn State's going to look for an invade off this when you have set Leona. Yeah, probably. And a Jin. you can start Deadly Flourish and not lose too much off that first wave. Of course, you're invading into a Nautilus, but the rest of the level ones from the side of I, NYU aren't great. Invading into Nautilus, Samira, probably not great, because if Nautilus can stack his auto attacks and multiple people, Samira gets her passive, which is that little extra damage, and it racks up her for style points definitely fast gonna be interesting and very important that Samira did take the cleanse this game you like to see it yeah no you... knows kind of what this game is going for here with Leona Jin with an Elise, Elise. To boot. there's a lot of CC on Penn State's team which is definitely gonna help lock down these champions like the ribbon like the zed and really be able to dish out also something i didn't notice in the very brief loading screen uh ice flowers summer spells yep teleport ignite it's the uh ice flower special man just... i think this, i think this is good because you know cause this is like never going to gank you so there's no need to flash out of things and then ignite just lets you fight riven all the time i think it's smart it's not it's not just like in Ice Flower Special. It actually is like big brain in, in this scenario. So I, I like it. I'm a fan. As we're getting unpaused. Yep. Getting back in the game here. Finally for the start again. Game three. Winner takes all for Penn State in New York. The pings are out. Says, yep. Pings are out on both sides. Going for a top lane invade with Samira just on her lonesome, it looks like. 
Pese can afford to five might down the bottom. This like... might work for Pese if they go for it, if it's just Samira there. They were probably predicting an invade. Yeah, oh, also, a Thunder spell yeah, I didn't notice. Tarsus has exhausted this game. Yeah, it makes. I mean, it makes I, kind I'm of sense. I'm a fan really of that as well. I think that's very good. Because if you exhaust somebody and they're they're stuck walking around in your defile and you'll get a lot of extra damage off on it as well. So uh a lot of nothing happened on this invade. Everyone just sort of like walked. It wasn't mine. And they're just like cool. Minions have spawned. Don't stare directly at now. You wait and watch. As yeah, it'll be blue, again. blue starting for both, as opposed to the past two games where we saw a top lane start. Well, not necessarily, because in the first game there was that invade. All three games have had unique jungle starts. That's the conclusion I've made. Yep, and now what we get to see actually is the uh, jungle has passed for the upside of the map, which we have not really seen yet so far. So despite at least generally not having the place to the cards he gets, should be able to get the top lane first. And I think if we can I see like... them do an early gank off on this ribbon and get Camille ahead early, gonna be worth one to Penn State throughout the game. I feel like that fake leash that New York Spawning did was kind of unnecessary because it's Karthus. You know they're basically always oh. going to start Penn blue experiencing side. experiencing some lag, it looks like. All right. Penn, Penn State at 200 gold lead two minutes in. What does this mean for the... <laughs> what does this mean? Uh, it means they didn't fake leash top side. <laughs> it means that Set can auto attack the mid lane better than Zed can at level one. Thrilling analysis, I know. Hi hire us for the analyst desk. Alright, we're unpausing. Alright. Now we're Not back. Is just sort of bush gaming. Yep. Going a little bit low, that's a very awkward forward. grenade. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's definitely what that likes to do against melees. You start your Q, you eat someone, and then you auto reset. And they just sort of take a lot of damage. Yep, Ice Fire training aggressive. Sonic has level 2, but Ribbon level 1, pretty good in its own right. That's actually a really good trade from Riffin there, all things considered. Managed to burn. I thought it was potion. Not the biscuit, just the vanilla potion. Yep. But I definitely played that really well considering I if I hit level 2 first. Good, good play, actually. I thought his bot lane engaged him to get better. Looks like the heal has the ignite down. TV going for the re engage. The four shots there need to be better going very low. Only one more shot to be reloading. Pain Handler looking for him. No! First blood of the Samir on the reload. Reloading. Now Pain Handler is the trouble to dash oh. for the double kill in the bot lane again. Extra Matic off to a 2 a 0. Started the dive coming in top lane. Deja Vu, they're going to force the teleport as well for Nail. Going for it. Tells it's very low. Deja Vu eventually able to find the kill and take accurate the teleport for good measure. So, Loki Parkour looking for it. The flash away from Deja Vu. And now the Zen is in trouble. They're not going to continue to dive. It's a little too risky without Ice Flower having mana. And Penn State, they do find the counter in the top lane, but the bot lane is just an absolute disaster. That's, uh, that's why one of my friends who mains in named his account one sec reloading. Because, uh, if, if he was any AD carry but Shin, that probably would have ended up being first blood. But unfortunately, the reload lockout. As this is a and very notice, you know, aggressive invade here. Mail can definitely help out. I'm a, I'm a fan of this actually because Elise is down a few camps to Carthus because while he was busy diving top lane, Carthus could farm the mid wave and he's two Music. levels up. He's he's actually, very, very rich dead man right there. Yep. As now in the bot lane, that double kill for. Uh, the mirror results in Noon Quiver versus the Longsword. And Karthus is also just taking the crugs away too. Yeah, it's full topside curve for Karthus on the enemy camp. Definitely not what you want to see as a Pesce juggler. Now the gang's topside, I thought, though, able to buffer the E. Just took those two minions as Ooh, well. Oh, at least going for the cheese here. Looks at Teledex. Fine. No, the cocoon misses! I don't think that works anyway because Camille used oh, to get away. Oh, Panhandle going very low. The bot lane's done on extra. 
Matic, Vandal going very low. The grenade blocked with the W. And yeah, I think that at least play was very uh, idealistic because Camille had to use her E and she's not that high level, so it's not that low in cooldown. Ooh, Selenix possibly overcommitting here gets interrupted with the stun. I, I think he's fine. Yeah, fine, fine with Doubt here as well. Has the proc, he's gonna go for the kill. Big Knight burning down, as Selenix should have the nope. E available. To, yep, there's the E shield. He's gonna be just fine. Ice Fire going very low. Looking for the final kill. Has the tactical sweep, but it's not gonna be enough. The last More. few hits. Well played by the top laner. Barely making that one alive. And now NYU again. Starting to really? run away with this game in ways that Penn State really doesn't see happening. Karthus has kills. Samir has kills. Ribbon is. Karthus is level 6. Elise is level 4. Yeah, Karthus is. Karthus has been. So accelerated. Now, Pesit is Very... driving himself the dragon, so good play here to kind of trade from the top side. Gonna grab the yeah. top side dragon instead. So good I don't. Cross unfortunately, map. I don't think that's gonna be a lot because this giant minion wave is just going back into New York's favor, and they can they can play with the minion wave now. And Jin gonna have to play back a bit because if you get hit by the Nautilus here. It's, uh, it's big damage from uh, Mira. Yep, picked out of the bot lane here, I believe, by doubt if he has no camps up and available to get. Yes, he's been looking for Panhandler here, but they hook instead on to need to get better. Trying to grab on. Exomatic actually very low here. The card is slowed down by the Elise, but the weed's still able to grab the kill anyway. Again, really. Good play here. Does get a bit risky with Samira almost dying, but uh, at that point, you're like, yeah, I'll support deserves a kill. He popped off in the early 2v2, yep. and it's just going to end up accelerating this bot lane even further. As mid lane, they're, they're farming. Yeah, pretty Normally, you, you wouldn't expect Zed, mid lane but... to be the farm only lane, but uh, here we are. That's what happens when there's a set in the game. Let's say committing possible four here to a mid lane oh, man. play. Pretty risky. Considering it is I'm so used to this. The four man mid yeah, all the time. Yeah, just away from Ice Flower. Not able to grab the Hex and go yet. Yeah. That's easy. A lot of... Not really too That's much a wasted. lot of people mid lane at uh, seven minutes in. Yeah, not too much wasted. You could afford to do that since... There was nothing really big on the map to happen, so it's not that much of a waste of time. But, uh, luckily Zed gets a friendly Nautilus to help him push out the wave and let them reset. As, uh, yeah, if you, four people get sent mid and you just walk away, I'd be spamming that mastery as well. And, uh... Yeah, I saw a top one. It looks like they're just trying to nah, he's just freeze. getting the... Oh, oh no, extra mad. You had to free. <laughs> Sorry, we're not Unlucky. we're not that no, advanced. Yeah, no, freezing. No savants. No savants. Uh, in it's, lane. it's already cold enough outside as is. I don't think we really want to freeze any more than that. You know. Cloth is looking to go up on a recall time. That seems to be the play here. Yeah. So gonna shove that one have... out. Recall. Takes You're still him. very much ahead compared to your. Opposing ADC, Noon Quiver, plus the Vamp Scepter. Light skill, very powerful on Samira, in case any of you at home didn't know after seeing some of those very fun Samira plays that all always get posted places. As. Top of top lane game here for the Elite, but plenty of vision around for Selenik to be able to just. He's playing this really smart, just sort of like. Saying like, yeah, you're Camille, you're the best top laner in the game right now. I really can't fight you without my friends. I'll just let you have stay the lane. You can have fun there. I'll I'll sit back. Let my let my team do the work. Yep. Nautilus will wait patiently for his turn to attack somebody, but only for about like ten seconds until yeah, Carlos sitting there for gonna deny the shield from the Scuttle Crab, make that nice and easy take. Panhandler waiting on that pickaxe purchase. Now pings from Penn State in the river. They can look to cut off this cart this not with the duo as they bring four to keep. Find their gate on the cart that's done. Oh, taken down. Bailey able to grab that kill and now the ult is coming down. Reckley I'm gonna do damage, not gonna find a kill just yet. That was a good flash. 
Yep, and now Selenik still looking for the fight to get better. Grabs that place. Ooh, off of there. It's gonna be done up. Ice fire kind of damage. They're ripping into the Shanky Hill. What a hunt! Dead, Loki. Mark Four grabbing that one to kill. The big guy turning down. Finally grabs a double kill for the dead. Might be looking for the triple death mark comes through, and it is! That was an amazing hunt from the lead there on the Nautilus. Just leading into Zed being able to flex, flex his dead muscles a bit there. Dancing in and out of the fight and then even saving the ult for the Camille. Very well played. Off the back of Penn State just sort of seeing the cards there and trying to, trying to kill him off. But the team was up there. And because Samira rotated just in time, they get to take the Herald for themselves. Yep, and why you again finding advantage. Still not now. 2.5 to go. These are 2,000 gold. Have the Herald. Pop and top with an dramatic. Look for some early plating gold onto that Probably, carry, but Yeah, I Ice think. Flower might just look for the solo kill. Knowing, I don't uh, think that. Uh, should still get the tower. No, nope. Ice Flower is going to tank it. Yep, nicely done. Thank you. So, a bit of a waste there by. Oh no, Carthus! Oh, Carthus picked off. Good solo player might need to get better. Down going very low. The exhaust coming through. He can't die. He's just healing off the spider. Days under eventually able to grab it. Has to repel off of Zed. No shadow to be had there. Nice fire coming in with the teleport. Heal down. He goes down to the curtain call. Penn State finally find their counter and Bounce now can back. find the Ocean Dragon as well. Okay, so we. So, Infernal Lift or Mountain Lift? Place the bet right now. Before it goes. Infernal, Infernal. Hey! Money. All right, there we go. We got it in time. Yeah, very good play from Penn State there, bringing the Camille down, sort of get a good flank off. And good damage from Zed there. Not like get that as much because it is that. Yeah, but has that Eclipse to a lot of armor on this uh, campaign? Eclipse a lot, also a lot of armor just, say. Eclipse is also just a really good item on someone like Zed because yeah. you can't easily... Once you go in, it's pretty tough to dance around team fights without extending important cooldown. Unlike, say, the Talon from the previous game where you just ult and then you're like, woo, I'm invisible. And now. Living, just farming. Yep, pretty easy. Zed might be looking for something in the top lane here onto Ice You can probably but... get this if, he, if they decided to, but instead, just gonna keep the minion wave right at his doorstep. Pretty, pretty good positioning there. Uh, Samira's got her shield bow already. So that turns your ability to kill her in the straight 2v2 from, like, uh, possible to not possible. Shield bow is very powerful on Samira. That, that's the lesson. And Grievous one's definitely going to be something the Pensings going to need to pick up this game with the Eclipse of the shield bow. And then as well, probably the Gorge Rinker onto Selenik in the top lane. They're looking yeah, to they just, uh... I saw going in very early. Solar Flare goes way behind. Hex Pokemon finally comes down as I saw going very low. The kill is there, but the rest might be able to find it. They see Cardus, though, going in. They need to get better. Fine stun, but they missed that. <laughs> and yeah, Ice Flower left out the dry. It ends up being a one for one. But meanwhile, bot side of the map, because yeah. they're on the top side, the tower It's a one for one, one but the you're losing. The whole cannon wave going to fall down before Pain Handler can get up here to farm. Yeah, because if you walk up to this, Goggle is just point and click you, and then uh, Samira does uh, Devil May Cry. Well, so we're going to be pulled out of the red line. So the Flurex misses, but does find the Black Ultimate on the Extramatic. Now going for the ulti fine. Inferno Trigger. Inferno Trigger. Good clap. Right now, now Bale is gone. Good teleport in for Cell, and against the Matic goes on a killing spree. And the curtain call not going to find anything on the tail end. Pensley try to make the counter, but it ends up being... All in favor of I, I don't think I don't think extra manic expected to E to just send him into the bush. He probably could have E'd like in a different way, but very good play giving the yeah, your team a run for their money when they tried to do a play with Veil roaming on down. And they did get two turret plates, so in the in the long term of everything it was a very, very extended one for one. As Galactic Emperor Zed. He will wait patiently for his chance to kill this Kamiya. 
down here. Yep. Oh. Gets this gold, he gets Amok Drill. I think he's starting to get a little bit more difficult for Penn State to play the game. They still do have this split push type, but as long as Camille can't really 1v1 the Zed, that's going to be a uh, pretty high hope. Well, probably going to go take that 1v1 here pretty shortly. Bone plating, definitely a good room there for the Camille. Yep. Unfortunately, Eclipse does happen to be on a low cooldown, so it just comes up again and again. Good guy Nautilus helping the Riven clear out that mid lane wave, giving her some more CS. Mm -hmm. As once again, we just sort of see Karthus just out farming his opponent in the jungle in terms of raw numbers. Yep, and oh, has he's more. To get better, going for the flash of cage on the Nautilus. They're going to find everything. the pickoff, and that's right before Dragon. He will be up beforehand, but now Penn State has the opportunity to get in here, sweep out everything in the river. They're not going to really be able to be contested in this. Leona ult will bed. come up right a, a bit after the dragon spawns as well, so it's not that big of a loss. But you did lose Leona Flash, which definitely is somewhat of a loss. As mm -hmm. uh, he's dead. Right in place. He has to know there's a lot of people down here, so he's Playing a bit on the safer side. Now Ice Power does have TP available, Selenus does not, yep. so as they gotta get some more stuff in the top lane as well here before this dragon actually spawns. This is gonna be the game a game breaker fight if a fight happens. Which more than likely it will be I, I hope, because if New York just gives this up, that's sole point down to Penn State. Kun goes wide so Nautilus can walk yep. freely He's forward. Walk up here. Dreadline connects! So long, bro! Oh my, on it needs to get better, and Mail's gonna be taking the punishment there as well as Riven here. Now, Icebar coming in with a teleport, Jay Ray Low is the lead, the first game is the damage they the way for the most part, but it's still gonna be the kill over. Mail looking for another K fight, a double kill for the Samir as he's going to be again, unable to grab the damage off that showstopper to finish off two, three members. Very now. good! The Mist Cocoon gave Dawid the confidence to just walk forward and smack! Range hook onto Leona, and then it's just the team fight power of someone like Riven and Karthus with all this AOE and Samira dodging in and out of these fights, getting getting her ultimate off. Very well played, from New York. Oh, they got to look for. Oh, the good line misses, but Yildo. Yildo gonna be able to save Samira for now. Does have to get out of there in quite a hurry, but no summoners burn. But that does give Penn State advantage to grab this second Rift Herald. Yep, so, it's a little bit of a I don't think, the last fight, but I don't think a flash for Rift Herald is necessarily worth it. But maybe if they get another they're kill, not even they're, rip, they're, just, they're just gonna push you. Oh no. Oh no, Harold reset himself. They are just going to push this. Alright. Oh no, the Soul Head player misses, the Cocoon misses. Oh no. That's a... Uh, flirt, also misses. That's sad. Now they're going to try to look for Karthus. Penn State looking in almost what seems to be just breaking for a kill. They might grab one on a doubt. They're like, why did they finally get the kill? Now the record is coming out. So he is getting caught up in the kill. That was some big Karthus. Has the Haymaker to buy some time as well as the ultimate to get away. Now the is down, but still have a oh! four man knock up. Inferno trigger to follow. Penn State, you tried your best, but it is not looking pretty. They only find one off that the rest able to get away somehow. Vale gonna go down momentarily as he's caught way behind enemy lines. Riven just hit him with the backwards long jump over that giant wall into the four man notch up, salvaging that place for you. They're gonna look to try to help Vale get away here. Vale will get out. So it actually oh. ends up being a one for two still in favor of Penn State, but that was very close what a for jump. a disaster. That sign Riven up for the Olympics at that rate. That long jump. Holy moly. Important to know that Samira and Zed are both still deathless. So that is some shutdown money that could be going. Penn State should they claim those kills. But uh, Samira with a smart buy. Getting those plated steel caps. Because the majority of the damage threat will end up being AD because you can easily use your W to block the Elite to kill. So it's going to be very interesting to see how that goes. Yep. Score trigger here now. Pretty much Mythic's on everybody at this point. Finally Ooh. getting up to spec. 
Second item also completed for Deja Vu off those massive kills for him. Grab the Zonia's gonna be able to buy a bit more time off of those cages. Yeah. And Curtis is definitely going for that secondary. Can especially without flash can help him make some of those fun plays where he can stall for enough time for his team to show up and make them back. He still got the level up on Elise. Which is very important as well. As three man onto Coral Selenik down here. But the team is responding. Yep, look for Selenik here. Five seconds play as well as the base here. They don't lay as a team well enough. Though. Good repel to Dominic, but not Robin. It's time to get away. Selenik fighting so much time. They just finally grab the Dominic, but now Exomatic is here looking for the response. He'll still find his way onto the lead. And PSU managed to find one disengage, but I mean, Riven able to doesn't buy amount so to much anything. Time. It doesn't really amount to anything because you can't get the turret because Samira and Nautilus are still here. Can't really do much on other sides of the map because Ice Flower had just reset and Jin is forced to play back in mid lane against an assassin like Zed. So they got a kill, you know. Good for them. I guess. I, uh, there's really not much comes off of that, because Riven still has teleport up for this upcoming dragon fight in 30 seconds. Yep. Darth is going to get his hourglass on this recall. Very good. Very strong item for this upcoming fight. Samira's got uh, another gun in that inventory. Very powerful. Because now... When all those enemies are low HP and she's uh, doing her spin, they're gonna die. Also note with That's the longbow it. with the Eclipse with the Gore Drinker still in inventory, still no healing reduction picked up by Penn State. That's also a big point of contention as well. Ooh, look <laughs> like good shadow away by a little right. You know, you know, you gotta gotta give him credit for the for the on that. Panhandler is stuck Just, mid lane here, will not have the early rotation, can't walk up with all those... Yeah, styles. this is really tough. Because it now starts dragging, like, has to back away. What? Alright. Riven is looking for the long time. The flank all the yeah. way from behind. Going down bottom, has that control, so he's not on a ward yet, does get spawned out though by that river vision. They find not him, not so he Good away, able to chuck out a little bit of health from Vale. Riven again, but it still was still the dragon very still good up. Aggro will reset here by Michaela. Fez is gonna turn this back. This is a uh, long, long fight. Looking for a course, looking for the engage. Need to get better. Finally, finds it. Needs blue damage on to Zed. Just jumping out of fight. Is down, able to steal it away. Fails. Stuck in the middle of the fight. Finds the all the on to the Riven. Not even find the CC on Exomatic. And then jumps through. Now the Reckless is coming out as Crush goes down. Selenic grabs the kill on the Ice Flower. Fail falls to the Zed. And one picked off the meta. Need to get better. The Dragon, the kills to boot. And now they might be looking for the dive. Panhandler all on her lonesome here under the tier one. Merit Selenic is going to flop his way in there. Actually almost going down. Very low. Loki Marco has to flash away as well. <laughs> oh no. Panhandler looking forward to the EOA. Selenic gets out. Maybe a little bit too greedy on that one, but they do manage to get out just okay. Tier 1 go down to mid lane for NYU as well. Boldly now ballooning to 3,000 off the back end of that one. Hey, I sang my praises for W on Y'all in the last game, but now I'm down on this Karthus looking completely insane with that dragon skill to just sitting in the middle of the team zoning them out. And who cares if Karthus dies? That's what his passive is for. Absolutely insane play there as they get the second infernal dragon and uh that's a pause mm -hmm. and uh important to note infernal dragon when your team has no previous dragons means you can get up to four those uh damage numbers those, those are going to go way up yep. if they can get more and more Kind of insane.
Gonna Another be... pause coming in here for uh, connection issues on the side of doubt. Yep. Can't be having high ping when you gotta make those solid smite steals. Oh, without a doubt. We are back. The game has slowed down. Leona was standing watch. patiently as she watches this poor scuttle crab get senselessly murdered in front of her eyes. Yep, as not really too much to go off of now. I'm still barren. Awkwardly enough, only one turret has died this game. Yep, just in its mid lane tier one on the side of New York. That's, it. That's well, they. New York killed the turret. Oh, yeah. Okay, well, now two guys. So my, my whole point was moot in that for a very high-intensity game, there wasn't a lot of, like, map movement objectives enabled. But now that the bottom lane tier 1 is down, opens up a bit more. Not only hex flashes over the corner of the wall just to show that, you know, he can hex flash. He's got it in the, uh in the rune page and now we enter everyone's favorite part of the league of legends stage the waiting game the where we wait state. for a big where we wait for a big objective to show up and then uh dream about whoever wins the fight the big purple worm is on the map so not junglers can't really just half-heartedly appear bot lane for two seconds and then go down so both these teams really don't have yeah. the best of barons to be honest but you know yeah once Samira gets, like, a few more items, they will. If Once Karthus gets, like, his Void Staff, he'll be able to do big damage. Which, he is going... Either he's gonna upgrade it fully to the Void Staff, or he's just got the little jewel for the Magic Pen. Which is insane value this game, if you look at Penn State's inventory, where, uh... Onto the guard, gonna try to go for it. Down though, has to dodge it. Now, Selenic in the background, onto Fandler. Finally managed to dodge away. Big Dondo. Fandler goes down. Now, Veiled is caught up in between. It ends up being a pick on the down, but Penn State. Oh, we have a quick kill off of it. Towards the top lane, I think. Look at the that man and possibly look to yeah, choke out around the Baron. Baron. Maybe, if not, just dealing with the vision. Yep. But importantly, they killed the top laner, who has teleport. So unless they just oh, they're looking for a pick on the lead. Does not grab it. The root does hit, and now the lead is stunned up in the back line. Hey, now shuts down the Zed. A good heal away by Deja Vu. I believe that should be Baron. Come in, and now it is definitely Baron. NYU over committing in the mid lane, trying to look for a pick on the AD carry, and they're able to. Snag the kills necessary to get you grab a big war and throw a up in a minute as well, but it looks like important not gonna get that spare. Important as well, Jin got that big shutdown money from the vet there. So that is one rich eighty Mary. Even last hit the what what can't what can't you know? As now we're gonna experience this drag fight around the dragon most likely very important dragon for both teams as it is sole point for both of them yep let's but, one right on the edge you can force that next fight look for a baron trade if you can take the fight a lot of different options when you got those three drakes so uh Jin went from the gale force and then change to collector rapid fire that that one kill on the Zed gave Jin so much money yep. that now fights look very even between the teams. We'll have to see how everything goes. Batman is coming down in the bot lane. Here. Waiting patiently. Yeah, they're waiting on Veil here. They were trying to get their set down here without teleport if they can help it. Which they will be able to, luckily. Yeah, they're starting up this dragon though. They're probably just... Already down about half the way. 2018, they're like coming to Davis. It's stolen what? again! By Doubt, are you kidding me? Solar Bear finds a bunch of the bikes. He's selling onto the back line, trying to find the Ice Flower, diving forward. Exomatic going for the double kill. They're here to find some more diamond twists to everybody. The triple kill for Bane Handler, though. Now it's a fail left alive against two members trying to flash away. 
Panhandler still on the back side of it. Possibly looking for the counter stun and continue to pursue. Davis in. Jin is here. Goes for the delayed Quadra. One more will do it. Panhandler, the, the, the delayed Pentakill for Panhandler. Um, now they can look to push down middle. A lot of happened. Go their way, but the fight finally does. A lot of happened that fight. Jin got a delayed Pentakill. Karthus stole Dragon again. I don't even know how Flashless Karthus was allowed to just like walk up into melee range of the dragon. But he was. Props to that. And. Penn State does have about a 1,000 gold lead, but I, I still don't know. It's this still is going to come down. The, the fights are very, very close. Pan and the able to thing is, and Baron and this next Infernal Dragon are going to be on the rift at the same time. Yeah, Set your timers for three and a half minutes, because at that point, that is going to be when the red alert signs are going to be blaring for both teams. It's going to be bloody in three minutes. And until then, we enter just some people taking the last extremity towers. Not too much else and happening. Panhandler off with a berserker potion. I think it's a bit too one. early for that. Yeah, but... I'm not too sure on that one. Just I yet. mean... If you have 500 gold, it's either that or like a long sword. Yeah, I'm working I on mean. the infinity edge as well here. Low key parkour. Fines need to get better here. Walking Little through chip. That jungle. Not nothing too scary. Riven, scary. however. Yeah, trying to go for Riven. Uh, a little that's bit of communication there with the solar players. Then played off my collective damage. Still gonna go down here eventually. The whole event stays around. Finds the flip and they definitely have to grab it. And now, Nautilus going in. Ice Fire pops the exit. And the Nautilus will not escape. Now it's just three carries of NY yeah. left remaining. Pente gonna be able to force out this tier two bot lane. The bit is here too, but I don't think they'll be able to get much out. I think that was the bit to uh heads up some delete there. Yeah, trying to go for the engage, trying to just spur off the fight, but it ends up actually costing them possibly. Okay, the they're gonna get a lot more here. Yeah, this they're is gonna get the inhibitor, and I think that's a, that's all they can get as they have fifteen seconds left in the rest of the effort. They will back off. The Penn State grabs that first inhibitor. Will be down first for that of the game, 30 minutes soul. in. The prophecy was true. With without the Galio, the game became a lot closer. Yep, who, without, who Gal guessed. without Galio, man, the game just becomes close. That's the lesson from today. But Penn State now at about 4,000 gold ahead. Importantly, Samira has the Bloodthirster now. Yeah, so Penn that State definitely needs to start getting some significant Grievous wounds. I mean, you do have the Thornmail on set, but... Not much else to reduce the gore. Requiem. All the Requiem just to use it. It'll be up. Actually, it might not be up in time yeah, for one of these been, That fights. had to have been a misclick. It might have been to stop recalls, maybe. Try to, like... Dagger, yeah, possibly. Maybe. Even so, Penn State's only going to be having Ice Flower coming in late here. Does have Teleport as well, so not that huge of a deal for this meal. This is... Cause it's, it's always tough to make these decisions, especially not since you have the open inhib. It's just sort of like, do we go for the soul or do we go for the Baron? Yeah, that's what... That inhib is actually huge for Penn State here, because now they can't really go for the Baron because then the Penn State just ends through bot lane as soon as they start the Baron. Yeah. So you do have this issue of there's no way for you to really bait the Baron either because of your bot lane being exposed. Is that Penta going to get tried with their early yep, uh... team? Okay, never well independent in their base. There's really nothing much they have to do here to stay out of harm's way. Yeah, they've, got, they've still got turrets. Kind of need to start going back to the Dragon. I'd like them to start this as soon as possible. Try to get there before Karthus comes and steals it again. Don't, don't talk to me about Karthus stealing this guy. They're both... Okay, Karthus is nowhere near... If Karthus this somehow should not be, steals this... should not be, I think, a contest here from NYU. There is no they way. Have, they have the bottom inhibitor down. It's not max the dragon for game. Penn State. That is the important part. It's not the soul. Penn State can immediately dragon rotate game. Baron. This next elemental dragon will be the last if the game lasts that long. Penn State are now just going to 
run go up right to, to Baron. the Baron. Yeah, they, yeah. Have the, they have the mid push, they have the vision control, they're gonna look for the Nautilus. Hector calls the minute goes out, but they're not running through very quickly. They'll try to get on the back line on an extra Matic, and then they're gonna find him. It's out a while. Grabbing, going down, Selenic on the back line. Try to get three man knock up to it so much. Man, it's going legendary, but shuts down now. Rushing forward with a game. What a win wall. Going down, Ice Flower trying to do it again. Oh to my. Really too much. Inferno Trigger yet again on and need to get better. Bail and Panhandler trying to see what they can do. Then a play fine. Double kill. Completely a carry. Panhandler though almost oh. jumped away. The Requiem coming up just in time. No, the Golden. He had the stopwatch as well. And Jin somehow, some way survives the Riven Dive, the Zed no Dive, anymore. the card that's also been and Samira. And now Pensei possibly looking to try to pull this. I don't think they can look at the okay. end just yet. I have no idea. We asked for a back and forth game, and I guess this is what we get. Those, every second of that fight, if something goes wrong for either of the teams, it sways it so far for the other one. They use the Camille ulti to try to kill the Nautilus. And Samira manages to stay out of harm's way for long enough, and then uses a great wind wall to block a lot of the damage. And it's just the stopwatch from the Jin as well to prevent him from dying there. Oh my god. There is You can't a get lot. much closer, but now Panhandler, after those few kills come through, full build! <sighs> Grabbing that Garden Angel as well as the Border Reminder, so you do have... That we have previous wounds in the game. It only took 35 minutes. Now we had we had um. Bale, to be fair, Bale did have the thorn. Yeah, mail. thorn. Okay, thorn mail for all those times Samira is willingly auto attacking the set. I agree. Yeah. Oh my lord. We asked for game three and uh, we're getting one. Yeah, I guess. Full control for Baron actually. They're possibly gonna look for the pick on Ice Flower instead here with Riven and Karthus. I think that's all you really can do. But yeah. Up here. Ice Flower does not need to take bot so he draws the members down and immediately goes I think... I don't think you fight this. For this I think... Fight. I don't... I don't oh, want yeah. to see... Um... Baron Click Red they're gonna try to go in on Jawai. Find the Hector Calls the main up on his but it's just gonna be too much damage. The Frozer cancelled by Veil. Hexamatic finally gets away with the Black Can and escapes Deja Vu though. It's not like looking for the kill. Now the ultimate up, he has so many low health bars. A double kill. For Jin and Ice Flower to finally kill Selenic, and that'll be one kill for Cutters off the Requiem. But Bale's in the base, he's got Super Mains, the inhibitor does respawn. Let's knock that one down here, Victor. That should be game for Best State. things happen with this carpet. It's very unlikely, but I've seen crazier things with Gal's carpet. Bale's gonna tank for the minions, he's not gonna let these balls just yet. Ice Flower is very low, tank tagged by one Karthus. Q. Now going into that, find it on to Camille, they finally grab the kill on, but now they are pressed to end the game. And Panhandler goes into the Guardian Angel, now the kill is free spawn. Doeed finds the kill on to Zed, looking for Panhandler, who's just trying to end the game with the reload. One sec reloading! Still has it, tanking the minions, Samira's the up, there's no way they can do it! Thousand gold over to so Extra Matic, and why you will hold! I don't know. I said I saw crazier things with this Karthus, but he was holding for real there. He's waiting for those stocks to go to the moon, baby. That's I I, I wasn't gonna make the joke. Thank you for making it. I, I didn't want to make it. It's required. It's just required. <laughs> what what the one? Oh my per, The God. one forecast quote is in. We got He's it. Speaking of stocks, that fat shutdown onto Samira. Oh uh, yeah, that's pretty much gonna be. Oh totally my completed. God. What's really rough about that for Pente is they're not going to have all the members up to contest for the Dragon Vision. Panhandler is still 13 seconds off as now everyone from NYU oh. coming back out of base to get And there's no teleports up, so PSU yeah. can't switch backdoor. There's no minions and no wards to backdoor on in any event, so... I mean, oh there could be a, there's a world where Pente could can try to face Can we handle another fight, fight, fight like that? If Pente can still log off the Dragon, maybe get Camille to get in the base and take out the Nexus, but... Gonna be a little bit on the riskier side if they do not have Ice Flower present for the fight. Guardian Angel not gonna be there for Karthus. Jin, is gonna be there for Camille. Just a few more seconds oh on God. that one for the Camille. The dive is there, posted on everyone who converts them. Is That's awkward. Already having to 
slash away the damage for Panhandler. Kind of insane. Absurd. Now the Infernal Drake going down to the Cutter. Carthage in the pit. Look at him. Oh, now again by Fail. He's not even given the chance. They get the dragon. Now they have to win the peace fight, though. Requiem coming through. Deja Vu goes golden as resurrecting is Camille. Watch for Samira. Fail going very low. Samira trying to do a jam, but he goes into the Garden Angel. Tessin going to try to peel. Also has. The stop watch is not but an extra matic blown to pieces. Camille soon to follow. Not Camille, sorry, Riven soon to follow. They finally Two find Two dragons five. from PFU, they find... but the third, no, no, no. Nope, and that will be the game. Holy Penn moly. State in game, in a banger of a game Yuck three, will take you one 40 victory. minutes. Oh my lord. GG, well played um, both teams here this afternoon. I don't know. That was definitely a game three. Big fan. That was a big fan of quite banger of a game. Again, both teams playing it as about God. as best as they can. Penn State, they got the early Drakes and were finally able to capitalize them on them later, but not without some resistance from doubt who had the smite of God on his side today. Penn State, though, able to make it happen. They got the Barons. They got the Dragons eventually, and we were able to turn around in a few clutch team fights. Kudos to Panhandler as well, somehow managing to position around and survive I don't even know. all of those diving champions. What? What a banner of a series, honestly. As soon as the Galio was banned. You know, Ga Galio was the limiter. As soon as Galio's banned, we get a banger. That's just, just that, how, that's how, how it goes. rides. How it rides. What a what a game. That was a very good game again. Well played, all. Um, other than that, no real interviews to be had. GG, well played. That's pretty much all we got here today for you guys for the collegiate, uh, end of League of Legends. We'll come back to you for more C lol the next week. We play PSU LCS. Also going to be starting up with our Super Weeks coming up here for oh boy. the first few weeks of play. We'll be bringing that to you on this channel here very shortly on. And we'll see you guys here, I guess, next time on The Rift. Peace. Yeah.